Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Library of the Unwritten. I am the Archiver. Back with today's stories. Today's series is the final part of what if Deku turned into the vampire god after death. Before we start, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Now let's get into it. They found a lot set up for them. Due to the fact ectoplasm is dead, they had to improvise. Alright I'm going to explain how this works. You're all going to be put in pairs. These pairs were fairly chosen based on strength and combat level. In these pairs you'll be fighting each other. To win these fights you have to knock the other person off the platform you're standing on, as you can see there are many platforms. Each pair will have their own platform. I'll now announce the pairs. First pair. Bakugo and Midoriya. Second pair. Todoroki and Tokoyami. Third pair. Aoi Rozu and Asi. Fourth pair. Shoji and Sato. Fifth pair. Bead and Siro. Sixth pair. Hiroshima and Kaminari. Seventh pair. Ajuru and Aoyama. Eighth pair. Mineta and Koda. Ninth pair. Mina and Jiro. Tenth pair. Yuraka and Hagakur. Now will all the assigned pairs go to a platform. As Zawa announced. Midoriya let out a sigh as he noticed who his partner was. Bakugo. He floated up to the platform Bakugo was already standing on, which just so happened to be the highest platform there. You may begin. Bakugo set out a large-scale explosion to start off the match, Midoriya just teleported behind him and kicked his back. Bakugo was sent forward so he quickly stopped his fall with an explosion, and sent a blast of one for all at Midoriya. Midoriya flew above the blast, dodging it all together. Bakugo jumped up at Midoriya trying to catch him off guard, but Midoriya teleported back onto the platform, and watched Bakugo aimlessly fly up and explode the air. Midoriya then jumped up at him and kicked his side, hard. Sending Bakugo flying to the side fast. Bakugo couldn't stop flying in time and flew off the platform and lost. The first round. Azawa put a point under Midoriya's name it stood for the amount of fights won. This went on for the rest of period 1 and 2. Until the lunch period. Midoriya had won 15 out of 25 rounds. Bakugo won 10 rounds out of 25. After all of that they were free to lunch. Next period they'd be learning some basic rescuing rules on paper. Midoriya snacked on his blood bag as he sat on a horizontal pillar of the ceiling in the lunchroom. Alright, the poison is a total of 20,789,600 yen. That lead up almost half of what I have at the moment. Then the torture weapons finish off all the rest of what I have at the moment. I still need more money for this to work. I still haven't got enough money for the equipment, cork cancelers, furniture, locks, etc. I guess I'll just have to sell more bodies, Midoriya thought to himself as he used his phone, finishing off his blood bag. The poison is a total of 200,000 us. The torture weapons are 300,000 us. Dot. They're expensive because of the type they are, hard to find and do a lot of damage. Soon lunch was over and they had to go finish the rest of their classes. After all of that they were free. All of the class decided to hang around at the dormitory, since they were too tired to go anywhere. Midoriya sat in his room, he didn't bother to hang out downstairs. If he did he was sure the class would try to pick on him, and he wasn't in the mood to deal with them at all. In total I need. 519,740,000.00 yen to do this. I don't even have a quarter of that amount. That's a lot of bodies needing to be sold. A at least I'll be getting a meal each time Midoriya thought to himself as he totaled the costs of everything. He needed 5 million United States dollars total. Midoriya sighed at the lots he needed for this to work. Though he felt that it would be worth it in the end. Seeing everyone in pain just like he was, just like they did to him, brought him a menacing happiness. He grabbed a blood bag, got into some better clothes, put his phone into his pocket, and teleported downstairs. He ended up startling half the class who just so happened to be sitting there. Azawa wasn't in the building at the time. What are you doing here Deku, isn't it clear no one likes you? Hiroshima spat. You get out, no one wants to see you, Kaminari added. You'll all regret this. Just watch Midoriya thought to himself trying to keep calm. Siro shot out tape right at Midoriya's face, as he was eating as well. Midoriya ended up dropping his blood bag, it spilled all over the floor, making it look like a crime scene. Midoriya could no longer keep calm, someone got in the way of him and his food. Midoriya stared at his spilled food in pure fury. He did off the ground like the animal you or Siro snarked. Midoriya looked up at Siro, a pure rage fueled bloodlust in his eyes. The atmosphere tensed up as the class watched Midoriya go from casual to boiling rage. Midoriya teleported behind Siro and kicked his back, violently. It sent Siro, who was standing up, into Kirishima knocking them both down. 
Kaminari charged at Midoriya, but Midoriya sharply struck his forearm and elbow at Kaminari's jaw, sending him toppling into the ground. Akuga was in his room at the moment, but Tokoyami wasn't. Tokoyami sent Dark Shadow at Midoriya as the other three began to get up. Midoriya punched Tokoyami's Dark Shadow head on, sending it whimpering back to Tokoyami. Kirishima jumped up and went charging for Midoriya. Midoriya shifted his stance last second sending Kirishima into the wall behind him. Siro tried to shoot tape at Midoriya again, but Midoriya dodged this time, the tape hit Kirishima instead. Midoriya teleported behind Siro, grabbed his arm, twisted it behind his back, and sent him forward with another back kick. He accidentally broke Siro's wrist. Siro screamed in pain as Midoriya glared at all four of them. Spill my food ever again and look what happens, Midoriya hissed as he began to walk away. Kaminari tried to charge at him one last time, but Midoriya gave him an uppercut to his jaw, knocking the lights out of him. I heard a scream. Azawa shouted running into the room. All he saw was the four defeated teenagers, a raging Midoriya, and a puddle of blood next to it, a bag indicating it was Midoriya's food. Midoriya just randomly attacked them, Iida said. He was standing across the room, leaning against the wall with one leg lifted, not lifting his eyes from his phone. Azawa tried to piece things together from what was evident to him. I can confirm Todoroki said. He broke my wrist. Siro screamed as he looked at his very purple wrist. Azawa let out a groan as he figured out what happened. Ida, Todoroki Siro, Tokoyami, Kirishima, Kaminari, and Midoriya. My office. Now Azawa said as he walked to the office room they had. From what I'm seeing, Siro and the other two did something. Midoriya ended up losing his food which probably angered him which makes sense. Either way, he isn't the one who started this as Alwa thought to himself as he called for recovery girl. As they waited for recovery girl they began the discussion. I want you all to tell me the truth who started this. As Alwa asked. Midoriya the 16 said in unison. Now Midoriya. Is this true? As Alwa asked. No, they started this all Midoriya replied, glaring over at the wall in frustration. He wanted to go out, it's the only reason he came downstairs. What happened? As pros were just chilling around when Midoriya randomly came downstairs eating his food. Suddenly he just started to glare at us, Siro waves his hand, and he just attacked him. We tried to stop him, but he then attacked us as well Kirishima lied. Midoriya had a look of denial. Ida and Todoroki, tell me the truth. Is this what happened? Yes sir, they both said. Now Midoriya, tell me your side of the story. I was getting ready to go out, I was finishing off my food. I was looking for you when suddenly these three start picking at me throwing remarks for no reason. I tried to keep calm, that was until Siro threw tape at my food while I was eating it. It fell and spilled all over the ground, following up with him insulting me telling me to eat it off the ground. That's when I attacked them Midoriya said. The covery girl came walking in and healed Siro best to her ability, though due to the fact Siro didn't have much energy he had to get a cast, but that would happen later. Hmm. From what I saw at the scene and how Midoriya usually acts and how you all act towards him. I know he's telling the truth. Though, it's possible I am wrong. But no worries, we have cameras for a reason now don't we as always said, trying to see the reaction of the other six. Their faces all grew worried and angered. Just as I expected. You six are lying. There are no cameras. Midoriya is telling the truth, as always sighed. B but, sir. He broke my wrist, you can't leave that unpunished. Siro hissed. Well yes, but you three also started the assaulting. Midoriya, I can't be biased. Ida and Todoroki, due to lying and not stepping in you're also looped into the punishment. You seven aren't allowed to go out. Not to mention you're on extra cleaning duty. Midoriya, four days, you six, five days. You now dismissed as always said. Midoriya grew angry and teleported out and back to his room. This isn't fair. They started all of this, they should be the one getting all the punishment. Midoriya thought to himself as he punched the wall in anger. It didn't break or crack, Midoriya made sure to not hit it too hard. He groaned and flew onto his bed, pulling out his phone as he has nothing to do. It's not a big deal I guess. I still got my heads in. I'll just go out at night, they won't ever know. Midoriya thought to himself. Ugh nothing is working, how are we going to get rid of him? Kirishima groaned. If we keep bothering him he'll eventually have to do something drastic, that's when they'll have to expel him Kaminari said. I say we should get him in on this, he has the best way of getting under people's skin, Siro said. Good idea, we should do it tomorrow since we don't have class. Great. Time skip. 3 AM. Midoriya laid in bed, unable to sleep as usual as he didn't have any fresh blood. A weakness of his. It was dead silent, only the sound of his own breathing and heartbeat being heard as he sat in his room getting ready. He had to go make more money and eat. 
Once he got ready as he usually would he teleported into an alleyway of a random street in Hosu. He walked down the street looking for any port victims. Though considering how late it was hardly anyone was out. The streets were empty and dark, only street lights and the moon illuminating the way. Though mid Oryu could see quite fine. He sniffed the air, trying to smell out anyone who could be out at such an hour besides himself. After a bunch of sniffing and listening he found someone, again in an alleyway. He quickly did his job, killing them by drinking all of their blood. After he teleported himself and the body to his secret base, not even the League knew of it. He began his dissecting and jarring of the body parts as he did the previous night. Once he finished he went back to the same place and sold it. He got 10,394,800.00, YEN 100,000, US. After he changed and went back to UA, showering again as he smelled of a fresh corpse. Tomorrow would be a Saturday. The day everyone tries to get under his skin. The day he comes into play. Saturday. Midoriya woke up, he had slept in that day as he had nothing to worry about. He lazily got up and took a shower as the sun shone brightly through his balcony windows. He was wearing his bracelet so he was protected from the dangerous rays. After he finished showering he grabbed a nice outfit and his breakfast, and opened his bedroom door. Once he did however, he was met with a bucket of ice cold water thrown at his face and a bunch of flour on the side. Midoriya fell back into his room, blinded by the flower that got into his eyes. Burning was heard going down the hall, away from Midoriya, as well as Snickers. Midoriya groaned as he got up and took another shower, leaving his blood bag on his bed and locking the door. He ended up changing his clothes again. This time he didn't walk out the door, he took his food and teleported downstairs into the kitchen where he snacked on his blood bag as he used his phone. Of course, he got death stares from all around. As he was finishing off his blood bag and using his phone, his phone was suddenly smacked out of his hand. Sorry my hand slipped he said. Midoriya turned to face this pest. Class 1B, the blonde haired blue eyed snarky brat of their class. Monoma. Midoriya internally groaned upon seeing Monoma. Whatever Midoriya sighed as he bent down trying to grab his phone. Monoma accidentally tripped and smashed Midoriya's phone. Midoriya's eye twitched in anger as he tried to hold back from breaking Monoma's spine so early in the morning. Oops sorry Monoma laughed as he stomped on the phone one last time before running off. Now make sure you get one of the worst torture sessions, Midoriya thought to himself as he picked up his shattered phone. He could hear Siro and Kirishima laughing in the background as they stared at him. Midoriya sighed and went to Izawa, who was sitting on the couch of the main room. Sensei, Monoma broke my phone Midoriya said. Izawa, who was calmly drinking his coffee, stared up at Midoriya confused on how that happened and what he did. How did he do that? He knocked it out of my hands and smashed it. And what did you do in response? Nothing. Yet. Izawa let a sharp sigh slip past his lips. Well I guess you're going to be phoneless for a while, unless you can cough up your own money. The school only supplies you with things you need to live. Izawa said as he took another sip of his coffee. Okay Midoriya said, an anger building up on him. He used his phone most of the time because there was nothing to do. Midoriya began to walk away, make sure you get on house duty, you and the other six have to get to work by 12, as always said. Midoriya nodded his head and threw out the empty blood bag. It was only 10 am. Midoriya transformed into a bat and flew up to the ceiling, he couldn't be bothered if he was high up. He has nothing to do, without his phone and being grounded there was nothing for him. He decided to get a head start on his chores, once he noticed the people below him in his class started to leave. He had to vacuum the common area and wipe the windows down. The other six had different chores. As Midoriya finished his vacuuming, Monoma came walking by, holding a container full of grain pepper salt and sand. He did his famous act and tripped over the table leg, spilling all of the stuff all over the ground. Just as Midoriya finished vacuuming as well. Monoma, what are you doing? Midoriya hissed, his fangs bearing. I tripped, everyone makes mistakes he said. Your third one within 15 minutes, you must have some head trauma do you need recovery girl? You seem to be running into everything Midoriya remarked. I'm just fine, how about yourself? Last time I checked you have unchecked anger issues that make you a practical ticking time bomb, Monoma hissed back. Are you sure you're not talking about another blonde idiot we have in my class? Or maybe even yourself? Midoriya spat. I'm not the one who relies on blood to live, can't relate. I'm not the one who purposely picks on other people for the boost in their already inflated ego. But I guess I can't relate to you either. Midoriya's. Marin red eyes stared daggers into Monoma's soul. Monoma emptied the rest of the remains of the container all over the ground, and blew it everywhere before running off. Midoriya groaned and vacuumed it all up before moving on to the windows. He had to clean them on the inside and out. 
As he worked on one side of the building, Manuma and Kirishima worked on the other. Once Midoriya finished with that side, Siro and Kaminari spread it ketchup, mud, and anything they could find on it. When Midoriya made it to the other side of the building, he was unpleasantly greeted by possibly one of the dirtiest windows ever. There was mud rubbed all over surface, then ketchup rubbed on the inside, as well as mayonnaise and mustard. Why? Is. This. So. Frickin. Dirty Manama and his crew are the one to blame. Ha. If they want to be like that then. I'll just have to do the same Midoriya thought to himself. He got to cleaning it up, it was difficult to remove cause Todoroki cooked it a little bit. After 20 minutes of scrubbing it finally came off. He let out a sigh and went to go take a break in the common room. However, when he got there the windows were more dirty than the window he just finished cleaning. Midoriya's eye twitched in anger as he got to cleaning it up fast. He then teleported to the other side where he found Manama about to throw dirt on the window again. He pushed Manama out of the way, getting the mud all over Kaminari instead. Hey. Kaminari screeched. Stop getting the windows I just cleaned dirty Midoriya hissed. We were just playing Manama said. Midoriya grunted and teleported away. He was done, if the windows got dirty again he wasn't going to clean it. Kaminari, Hiroshima, and Siro have to wash the dishes, take out the trash, mop the floors, and do laundry, don't they? Ha, hey, I got an idea Midoriya thought to himself as he walked over to the dishes. He grabbed half of them and teleported away, to his bathroom. He licked up all the plates in his bathtub and teleported back downstairs. He ran to the fridge and grabbed anything he could, and teleported back up. He had grabbed, jammed, marshmallow fluff, ketchup, oatmeal, beans, mayonnaise, mustard, pepper, and salt. He grabbed the jam and spread it all over the plates and cups he grabbed, after he put the marshmallow fluff on top, making it extra sticky. Then he squirted the ketchup all over, and threw the oatmeal on top after wetting it a bit. He then threw everything else on top. The plates looked horrendous. He then proceeded to let it sit, to make it harder to remove. While he waited for that to dry he grabbed some of his clothes, dirtied them with ketchup, hid the detergent, and put his clothes in the basket. Then he grabbed his trash back and cut it up a bit, he proceeded to then fill it up with more ketchup. His final petty revenge was throwing flour all over the floors, and putting some more ketchup and droplets of water on top. The plates were finally all grimy and difficult to clean, he stacked them on top each other, and teleported them all downstairs in the sink and on top the counters. After the time limit of his quirk ended he teleported downstairs to see their reactions. Why are the plates so dirty? Kaminari screamed as he walked over to the sink. Where's the detergent? Kirishima yelled. Why are hallways dusted in flour and filled with ketchup? Siro screeched. Why do all the trash bags have holes in them? Todoroki groaned. Midoriya let out slight chuckles slip past his lips as he used the TV. Midoriya they all sat in unison. Midoriya heard all four of them storming down the hallway coming to approach him, Midoriya teleported into the ceiling and stayed floating as a dark smoke. Where is he? Siro spat. They began to look around like madmen. Check his room. Kaminari yelled. It's pointless, he can teleport around. Manama said, he was leaning against the wall watching the situation unfold. Then what do we do? Kirishima asked. Ha, hey, just watch Manama laughed. Midoriya, I know you're in this room. You're such a coward, you can't even come down to face us yourself. What's wrong? Scared. Or is it that, you're actually worried this time? Manama said. Don't play into his hands, simple Midoriya thought to himself, trying to hold back. Come on. Manama laughed. Manama trying to get a coward to come out of his shell is pointless and a waste of time, he just isn't brave enough to do anything for his animalistic self. Todoroki said. This angered Midoriya cause he knew Todoroki shouldn't be the one to speak of anything. Midoriya transformed back and flew to the middle center of the air. Todoroki, I know you aren't speaking. You never display any form of emotion and when you do it's always negative. Though, if you think about it. I guess it isn't out of expectations, after all. You are your father's son. You act just like him Midoriya hissed. Bid him they all screamed. Todoroki was stunned by the insult, he didn't want to be compared to his father for all he's done to his family. He sent his flames out at Midoriya in anger. What is the meaning of all of this? Azawa asked as Midoriya flew higher. Azawa stopped Todoroki's cork from doing any damage before it got the chance. All the dishes are dirty, the floors haven't been mopped, the laundry hasn't been done, the trash hasn't been taken out, and you're all trying to fight Midoriya who already finished his chores, Azawa spat. Be but sir, he made the dishes extra dirty, Kaminari shouted. Is this for Midoriya? The four looked at Midoriya wearing smug grins. Well, yes but. 
That's after Monoma spilled sand all over the floor after I vacuumed and smeared ketchup and mud all over the windows after I finished cleaning them, twice Midoriya said. Monoma, you now also on house duty. Go help Kaminari, Siro, Kirishima, Iida and Todoroki. Midoriya you're dismissed as always side. Sir that ISNT fair. Monoma screamed. You all started it, I preferred this over him actually beating you all up. You're lucky he took this method, you did break his phone after all as always snapped. Midoriya wore a smug grin and teleported to his room. I don't have a phone yet, I'll just use my money from the market to buy a new one. Though, how do I explain that? I'd have to keep it hidden until the in-house suspension is over. Then I can claim I did some under-table jobs and got enough money to buy the phone, Midoriya thought to himself as he stares out his balcony window. Kaminari and the bunch groaned as they picked away the mess Midoriya left for them. Midoriya sat in his room, smugly happy. Though still a little mad. Soon they'd have to take the provisional license exam. And soon Midoriya would be able to go through with his devious plan. Once it was night Midoriya teleported away as he always would. He was out to get himself a new phone this time. He grabbed some money from his stash and teleported to the nearest phone shop. He was in a disguise so he wasn't too worried. He walked into the shop and looked around. The phone shop was a 24-hour one, it's why Midoriya was able to go in at 11.30pm. He had left the dorms earlier in the night, as he wasn't too worried about people coming into his dorm room. Especially after he locked the door. He searched around for a good phone and got it. He paid the cashier and left. He then teleported back to his base and put the phone in there, he wouldn't risk taking it to UA. After that he did his usual, killing, dissecting, and selling. He then returned back to his dorm and slept soundly. Time went on, eventually Midoriya's in-house suspension was over, and he was allowed to go out during the day again. It was possibly one of the most boring three days of his life. In class. Okay class. As you all know, the license exam is in a couple weeks. Today we're going to be focusing on how to help injured people as all what began. Midoriya zoned off, these things weren't important to him. After all he is a villain, learning hero things were pointless. Azawa noticed his unintentiveness and called on him to answer a question. Midoriya. When an injured civilian is found under rubble and is screaming what do you do? That's obvious. You tell them to calm down, and everything will be okay as you slowly lift them up. Good. Midoriya went back to zoning off. Time skip. Weeks go by, Midoriya made up a lie, and is now able to use his phone in front of them all. It's the day of the licensing exam, everyone is a mix of nervous and excited. Midoriya downed a couple bags of blood as he sat in the bus, he'd need the energy. Everyone around him chattered with excitement, he was only thinking of ways to torture them all. I'm almost at the amount I need. Just 208,274,000.00 more yen. I'm over halfway there. Midoriya thought to himself. He needed only 2 million us to go through with his plan. He had raised 3 million us within the weeks. I hope there are no mind readers. Dot. An hour goes by and eventually they make it to the test center. Midoriya just stood around as other classes from different schools began to load off into the place as well. Hey. I'm Shindo. A second year, I can't wait to see what competition UA brings. A black-haired boy said as he shook Midoriya's hand. Midoriya aggressively snatched his hands back and glared at the student. Quit the act, it's prevalent in your eyes. You're scouting out the competition. Midoriya hissed. I guess you can't get anything past a UA student he chuckled as he walked away. Midoriya let out a sigh as he teleported hand sanitizer and aggressively rubbed it in. The rest of class 1 had just stared at him. Okay class, follow me, Azawa said. They all then began to follow Azawa to a much bigger room. There was a sleepy man who gave out the introduction. Hello future heroes, Yon as you all know you're all here to take the test. It's important as the future of our society that you take this Yon important. Now let me explain the first round, he said. The class is all tensed up, what would the first round be? For the first round you're all going to wear three plates all over your body. You're allowed to choose where. The objective is to get two other people out, the only way you can do that is by taping all three of their plates using this orange bowl. Don't get your plates tapped or you'll be out too. Now, follow your teachers to your assigned spot. You should find the plates all there, they stick on and won't come off easily he finished. Azawa then stuck his hand up. The class followed him to another room, almost shaped like a perfect cube. They grabbed the three plates and stuck it on their bodies. Midoriya strategically placed them on spots he always kept guarded. His heart, stomach, and ribs. Azawa then left the room and watched from the stands. You may begin he said after a five minute wait. The room they were in suddenly just fell apart, revealing a battleground all around. They all began to run after that. This class is going to be targeted first. 
They all know our quirks and how they work, which means Midoriya's train of thought was cut off when the guy from earlier came jumping up off a platform holding the orange bowl, ready to throw it at Midoriya. Midoriya sighed and just teleported away. The rest of the class would have to deal with that. He teleported to a forest site he saw in his vision. There was relatively no one there. I guess I was right, Midoriya thought to himself. As he sat there and pondered his next move a knife was suddenly put to his neck followed with an insane giggle. He recognized it. Toga what are you doing here? He sighed, removing the knife from its place. I'm here to collect blood she said backing up. Don't you think you're being way to open? Someone's gonna spot you, Midoriya said looking around. Nope, cause I'm disguised as this girl she said, transforming into a blonde. Alright. Leave Midoriya said. Whatever she said running off. Midoriya sighed and teleported away, back to where he teleported away originally. He found orange balls scattered everywhere, most people were all dispersed as the ground was cracked. He grabbed some of those orange balls and flew off to get a better vantage point. He flew off just in time as well, he was about to be ambushed by someone with an invisibility quirk. Midoriya scanned the area, he noticed more and more people were starting to fill the ground below him, as fights erupted all over. He took the opportunity to take two people out. He zoomed down and tapped a plate on one person, startling them, he then flew to the other plate and tapped that as well. Then he finished the person off with their last plate. One person done, one more to go Midoriya thought to himself as he flew back up into the air. He flew into an alleyway where he found another person about to sneak up on another person, so he snuck up on the person doing the sneaking and got them out. Midoriya was the first one of his class to get two people out. He walked back to the exit where he just sat around, waiting for other people to come. Bakugo was the second person to pass in his class, as well as Kirishima and Kaminari following with him. Soon people started to fill up all the spots, including his class. Eventually the first round finished. City Gamma has been attacked by villains. You are tasked to find all the injured civilians and get them to safety. The sleep man said. It was around them then broke revealing a destroyed city all around. Cries for help could be heard everywhere. Midoriya teleported the spots he heard the most people. Help me help me. A person cried out. This looks bad, can you move? Midoriya asked. This looks bad, you're supposed to be calming me down, not scaring me more. The injured person shouted. Shut your trap, can you move? Midoriya hissed. No. Midoriya sighed and removed the heavy rubble from on top of the person. He then picked them up and walked over to the assigned recovery station. Midoriya didn't care about how he spoke with the civilians, he just wanted to get them where they needed to be. He went around helping the civilians losing points left and right due to the way he spoke to them, though he didn't really need the license. He's a villain plotting revenge why would he need a hero license? If anything he's rather get a villain license. As they were helping all the people a sudden boom was heard. Angwarka and his gang are now attacking. Todoroki and Inasa, someone from Shiketsu, were fighting as they tried to deal with the gang. Midoriya zoomed up to the fight and analyzed the situation. 100 members, 1 leader, 2 current fighters in a fight, and everyone else is busy. This is gonna be a pain Midoriya's side. Todoroki, stop fighting and deal with Orca Midoriya screamed as he dodged a cement shot from one of the members. He teleported behind Orca and kicked him hard enough to send him flying forward. Todoroki sent his flames out, but they were blocked by Inasa's wind. Midoriya was punched to the face by Orca's elbow and sent flying at the wall behind them. There was an indent mark of Midoriya's body left engraved into the wall. Midoriya sprung up off the wall and kicked Orca's back again, this time he teleported before he could do anything. Orca sent out strong pulse waves that made Midoriya curl in pain, his heightened senses were his downfall in this situation. Despite Todoroki not liking Midoriya he too had to pass the test. He wouldn't pass unless he cooperates, so he sent his flames at Orca, stopping the intense sound waves. Midoriya recovered fast and went charging at Orca, slamming his leg into his head. Shindo, the guy from earlier, sent out intense shock waves, breaking the ground up making the other gang members all topple as well as Orca. With them out of the way, Todoroki was able to send his ice and fire at Orca. As Inasa sent out a windstorm, a firenado formed around Orca. During all the chaos Midoriya took the opportunity to deliver one last strong blow to Orca's head, knocking him out entirely. Time's up. Midoriya was burned a bit but healed up. They all lined up at the announcing area of the licensing place and waited for their results. On this board you'll find you passed. If you didn't pass then you still have the opportunity to get a license. Don't be hurt by these results he said. Midoriya, Todoroki, and Bakugo. Didn't find their names on the board. They failed. These papers will tell you where you went wrong he added. Papers were handed out and they reviewed their results. Midoriya had gotten a 59, just below passing grade which was 60. 
Class 1A's top 3 students failed. How did that happen? Mineta laughed. But, I didn't need this license anyways, Midoriya thought to himself. After all of that they were all collected and taken back to the dorm rooms. Midoriya, Bakugo, and Todoroki were all called to Izawa's office. So as we all know, you three failed. Well, because of that you all have extra lessons to take. You'll be getting your licenses from these lessons depending on how well you did. There is only three lessons. The class doesn't know of these yet, so I don't want you to share them, but... We're considering doing a hero study internship. It's nothing like the one we already did. You need a license though, luckily for you three. You can get your license before it's time to take these internships. Take the classes seriously. You have one tomorrow, the day after, and the day after that. Your absence will be excused as always said. Midoriya just nodded his head, as did the other two. As they were dismissed Midoriya was grabbed by Bakugo. Meet at ground beta, 10.30pm. Don't be late Bakugo said, walking past Midoriya. Midoriya just nodded his head and teleported to his room. I wonder what he wants. It's unlike him to want to meet up. Especially somewhat late. What would he need? Midoriya thought to himself as he used his phone. A slight, very slight, part of him was worried. He didn't know what to expect and it was annoying him. It was only 7.30pm, so he had quite a lot of time to mentally prepare for whatever could happen. Midoriya snacked on a bunch of well-deserved blood bags. He had worked hard during the exam, even though he failed. Later. Everyone's in their dorms as it's late, 10.28pm. Midoriya is getting ready to go to ground beta, he put on a light green t-shirt and some black pants. He then teleported to ground beta where he found Bakugo waiting. Bakugo was counting down the time as well. What did you want? Midoriya asked. Follow me is all Bakugo replied with. Midoriya just nodded his head and followed Bakugo. He took the both of them to where he had his first training session with All Might. Two days after you died you appeared here for the first time. Ever since then you didn't stop bothering me. You're supposed to be dead. You aren't supposed to be here. I killed you. You're not supposed to be here Bakugo spat as he turned around to face Midoriya. Midoriya was confused as to where this was supposed to be going. Dot dot it's because of me that you have that dang flashy new quirk. If I didn't kill you you'd still be that weak bug the bug I could crush whenever I wanted to Bakugo continued. Midoriya tucked his hands into his pockets, leaned on the gate behind him, and just listened to whatever Bakugo was spewing. You don't belong in UA. He screamed sending an explosion at Midoriya. Midoriya just stood there as he healed up, completely fine. Kakin. Your explosions, hits, and attack are all pointless, where are you getting it here? Midoriya hissed. Fight me. If I win, you have to leave UA forever Bakugo screeched. And if I win? Midoriya asked. Bakugo hesitated for a bit before replying. Then I'll leave. Midoriya raised his brown confusion. I can't have either one of us leaving, I still need my revenge. If I'm gone I can't really do that. If you're gone then it's the same story. Midoriya just started at Bakugo. D. Bakugo screamed. Oh he's serious Midoriya thought to himself as he teleported away. He teleported to Bakugo's side and tried to hit his neck to knock him out, but Bakugo anticipated he'd be there and punched Midoriya in the face. Midoriya was sent back as Bakugo exploded up to him, trying to get another hit in. Midoriya teleported back into the air this time. Fight me with all you got. Bakugo screamed, activating one for all to jump at Midoriya. Midoriya swerved his head and dodged his punch entirely, then kicked Bakugo's stomach. Bakugo was sent flying even higher than he had jumped. Midoriya flew back to get away from the original spot he was in. Kakin, stop the nonsense, Midoriya sighed as Bakugo came exploding down at him. No. He screamed sending another massive explosion, sounding an alarm. Azawa was notified of what was going on and groaned. He got up and hurried to the situation. You're gonna get us both in trouble Midoriya said, reappearing 10 feet behind Bakugo away from his explosion. I don't care, one of us has to go Bakugo yelled. Midoriya sighed as he just sipped place to place, dodging Bakugo's attacks. He wasn't in the mood to fight, especially after fighting Orca. Not to mention Midoriya didn't feel like getting another house suspension. If he wasn't tired or on school grounds he would have pummeled Bakugo into the ground without any hesitation. Stop running away dang it. That's enough. As always spat, stopping Bakugo's quirk. Bakugo fell to the ground, but landed. Midoriya swiftly landed diagonal from Azawa and Bakugo. They were in a triangle. Bakugo bit his lip in anger as Azawa mentally surveyed the two. Azawa sensei, Bakugo started this. I told him to stop, you can check the security cameras, Midoriya said telepathically. He didn't want to get in trouble yet again. So Bakugo is the one who started this. Why? And why fight Midoriya specifically Azawa thought to himself. You too. My office, now. Azawa hissed. 
Midoriya teleported there, not feeling like quaking the distance. Eventually the other two walked in. Bakugo. Why were you two fighting? Bakugo remained silent. If you don't reply I'll ask Midoriya. Bakugo still didn't reply. Fine, Midoriya why were you two fighting? He was mad for some reason, something about my death, how I shouldn't be here, and how if I lose I'll leave, and if I win he leaves Midoriya replied. So it was a fight to see who stays, as Zawa sighed. You threw the first punch. Dot dot I did Bakugo grumbled. Midoriya, did you hit him at all? If you did how many times? I did, once and it was out of self-defense. Due to the fact you all have those licensing things for the next three days, I'll alleviate your punishment for after. Bakugo you have in-house suspension for four days, Midoriya you have a one-day suspension for not telling me you were going to meet up, as Zawa concluded. Midoriya internally screamed, this was the one thing he was trying to avoid. You'll serve your punishments after these three classes. Now go to your dorm rooms, as Zawa said. Midoriya sighed and teleported to his room, Bakugo just walked out. Midoriya changed out of his clothes and got into his comfortable clothes. He then sat on his bed and used his phone. I'm exhausted, but I need to get fresh blood in order to sleep. This'll suck Midoriya thought to himself. Once it was well dark outside he forced himself out of bed and went to do his usual. The next day. Midoriya woke up well rested, he had added more money to his collection. He was getting close to his target. He got dressed and went downstairs, he had to be somewhere on time today. The TV was on. Another missing case, no one knows what's happening to these people. Police are doing all they can to try to find these poor victims, but to no avail, it's difficult to figure out who's doing this. They believe it's all one person, due to the fact it's happening every day at around the same time, and there's always no trace a news reporter said, showing the faces of all the victims. Midoriya looked at the TV and held back a chuckle. They were all victims he had kidnapped. Midoriya, Todoroki and Bakugo are waiting for you outside as always said. Midoriya nodded his head and ran off. There he found Todoroki and Bakugo, ticked off, just standing there. Right, who are we waiting for now? Midoriya asked. All might and present Mick. We aren't allowed to go ourselves, Todoroki replied sternly. Midoriya hummed in response as he pulled out his phone and used it. Eventually the car pulled up and they were taken to the class. As they walked down the halls, after getting changed into their hero costumes, they saw three students from Shiketsu. A high school rivaling Yue. You all again? Inasa shouted. Todoroki groaned, Midoriya didn't acknowledge what was going on. Great, it's Baldi and weird hand cork Bakugo spat. Show some respect to purple haired fellow with glasses hissed. Whatever Bakugo sighed. I'm training with all of you. Right. I don't know, blonde girl said. Her name was Kami, it was the girl Toga was imposing as. Yes we're training with you if you failed the exam, Todoroki replied. I didn't get a chance to take the exam, she sighed as she pulled out her phone and used it. Will the fails make it to the training room, an announcement said. We ran fails. The Kugo shouted at the camera. Midoriya put his phone away and began to his walk down the hall, leaving everyone behind. Who's that, why is he so quiet? Kami asked. He's their class's number one from what I heard. Inasa replied. Oh? The rest of them then made their way to the training room. Midoriya was just vacantly staring as random people started to walk in as well. Okay, so as we all know. You all failed the exam. Well you're all getting a second chance so take these seriously. For today's lesson. You learn how to communicate that someone's injured without panicking the injured person. Midoriya held back a sigh as he watched injured people start coming into the training ground. Someone with a building cork made a bunch of plush bricks and heavy objects that looked real, but were lighter than you'd anticipate. They went under the objects and started their act. A bunch of people are hurt and need help. You approach one, what is the first thing you say to them? Though, the instructor said. Midoriya teleported to one of the injured people. You need to stay calm, he said. Good. Now help them, Dot. Midoriya teleported the heavy objects away and picked up the person. Good job, now the rest of you try. The Kugo ran up to a person. Are you hurt? You're supposed to be calm and rational. If you're screaming they won't calm down, the instructor sighed. The Kugo twitched in anger. Are. You. Okay, he said. Better. No. The Kugo held back an insult and lifted up the object on top of the injured. He then picked up the person and took them to the hospital spot. They then continued on with that for the rest of the day. Midoriya hated it. The next day was the same story, more rescuing people. But the third day. Was something different. As Midoriya, Bakugo, Todoroki, Kami, and Inasa waited around they heard lots of noise coming from outside the door. Today you'll be doing something different the instructor said. Midoriya just looked over at him confused. Then came running an entire class of rowdy kids. 
Midoriya groaned as he stared at the twenty kids that came running in sight, as well as a weeping teacher. Your task today is to win the hearts of these kids, the instructor said. Well, what is that? A blonde kid with spiky teeth shouted pointing at Midoriya. Midoriya glared at the child making him move back in fear. The kids, you can't glare at them like that Inasa said. If the kids act like dang demons they're gonna get a demon right back at them, Midoriya hissed. He has red eyes and fangs, not to mention he looks like paper. He isn't human another kid said. Midoriya teleported right up to her. Well of course I'm not, I wouldn't want to be the same species as you beings he hissed. They fell back in fear. Midoriya stop it, we have to pass. Scaring the Miz and helping us Todoroki snarled. Midoriya groaned and teleported off. Now what do we do? Kami asked. We could introduce ourselves Todoroki suggested. A bunch of the kids ran up to the five of them and began to look around at all of them. Midoriya was trying to push them away, but he couldn't hurt them, if he could he already would have. Hello, I'm Shoto Todoroki. My quirk is half ice and half fire, but I don't really like using my fire because of my childhood we. Boring. The kids shouted. Hey. Give me back my gauntlets Bakugo shouted, running after the kids. They managed to swipe your gauntlets. Todoroki asked. I had to take them off cause they're too dangerous to be worn around them. The cougar yelled. Your nails are sharp a little girl said, pointing out Midoriya's hands. His nails were naturally pointed sharply, he kills after all. Way to point out the obvious Midoriya said, snatching his hand back and flying up. He can fly too, I thought he could just move really fast. Another kid shouted. Midoriya rested in the air and took a mental break. This one looks like an idiot a kid said pointing to Inasa. That isn't nice to say to your elders. Whatever Baldi. I'm not bald. Letting your true colors shine, of course what would you expect out of hero wannabes? They can do hero stuff for squat, another blonde kid with blue eyes said. Shut it mini monoma Midoriya hissed. Who even is that? The kid asked. Midoriya teleported over to the rest of the group and sighed. We have to do something about these mutts. The kids, not mutts Inasa said. Yeah yeah. I say we find the ringleader of the group and tie him up, then we'll have the other kids throw rocks at him. The Kugo said. The Kugo they're just kids. Todoroki said. Well that's how I was raised and look I turned out completely fine. No, no Midoriya and Todoroki both said. Well we have to do something. The Kugo grunted. These high schoolers think they can beat us. I'm a prodigy and my class is full of kids with strong quirks, we'll show you. The younger Manama said. Attack them, with your quirks. He shouted as his class. Midoriya and the four turned around to face them as they were bombarded with offensive quirks. Midoriya dodged a little shark ball that was thrown at his face with the swivel of his head, as other quirks began to hit them all at once. That'll show you all, we're stronger than you are. The blonde kid said. When the smoke cleared up it revealed all five of them, completely fine. You wanna fight kid, the Kugo shouted making mini explosions. Bring it. The blonde kid said. They're just kids. The teacher cried. Kami whispered into all of their ears, she had a much better plan in mind. Let's get this started she said as he blew her quirk out. Her quirk was illusion. A night sky appeared above them, though it wasn't real. Todoroki made an ice slide of a complex shape. Inasa created a way up and Bakugo was the one who threw them up. Midoriya would teleport them up every now and then. The kids cheered with joy as rings of fire appeared around them as they went down an ice slide. Get in with them, Midoriya said grabbed the blonde kid's wrist. Let me go I'm a prodigy, I'm better than all of you. He spat. Act arrogant and no one will like you, not to mention you won't ever grow as a person. Midoriya hissed, teleporting the kid away. The kid was stunned by his words, what did Midoriya mean? The kids all giggled with excitement as they went rounds on the ice slide. Midoriya finally relaxed and fell asleep against the wall. After all of that they were allowed to go home, they had gotten their license. But now Midoriya had to serve his house suspension. It was a Sunday, which meant he wouldn't be allowed to go to class the next day. Midoriya walked into the dormitory, with Bakugo and Todoroki, and was immediately called to Izawa's office. Midoriya walked in as did Todoroki and Bakugo, confused. Did you three get your license? He asked. Yes they said pulling out their license and showing it to Izawa. Good. Now, Bakugo remember. You have a three day suspension. Midoriya you have a one day suspension. You can't come to class for those days as Izawa concluded. Midoriya nodded his head and teleported away. After that Midoriya just relaxed. He had not much to worry about, except for the fact he had to get more money. He wanted to have the money before the school festival. The next day. After school. The class hummed with excitement about internships. Midoriya already knew what was going on, he wasn't looking too forward to working with heroes. Last time he did that it was basically a mind versus mind test. 
His suspension went by quite fast. It was only one day after all. The next day in class was quite different. Okay class. Today isn't going to be the same as the other days. Today you're all going to be meeting three students. They're considered the big three. They're the highest ranking kids of our school. Now, will you three come in as always said. And walk three seniors. One with blonde hair, one with indigo hair, and one with sky blue hair. Their names, Tagata Mirio, Amajiki Tamaki, and Heido Niger. Hey everyone. I'm Tagata Mirio. The blonde said. Midoriya inspected them, mentally taking notes. In the past whenever they saw him they wouldn't blink an eye to help him, he didn't know how to feel about them. They didn't necessarily hurt him, but they always just stood by and watched him. Though, when Midoriya's eyes locked with Mirio's it was obvious Mirio mentally panicked. He had guilt eating up at him. I'm Heido Niger. The sky blue haired girl said. I am Amajiki Titamaki, the indigo haired boy said. Midoriya groaned as he stared at the twenty kids that came running in sight, as well as a weeping teacher. Your task today is to win the hearts of these kids, the instructor said. Well, what is that? A blonde kid with spiky teeth shouted pointing at Midoriya. Midoriya glared at the child making him move back in fear. The kids, you can't glare at them like that, Inasa said. If the kids act like dang demons, they're gonna get a demon right back at them, Midoriya hissed. He has red eyes and fangs, not to mention he looks like paper. He isn't human, another kid said. Midoriya teleported right up to her. Well of course I'm not, I wouldn't want to be the same species as you beings, he hissed. They fell back in fear. Midoriya stop it, we have to pass. Scaring them isn't helping us, Todoroki snarled. Midoriya groaned and teleported off. Now what do we do? Kami asked. We could introduce ourselves, Todoroki suggested. A bunch of the kids ran up to the five of them and began to look around at all of them. Midoriya was trying to push them away, but he couldn't hurt them, if he could he already would have. Hello, I'm Shoto Todoroki. My quirk is half ice and half fire, but I don't really like using my fire because of my childhood we. Boring. The kids shouted. Hey. Give me back my gauntlets Bakugo shouted, running after the kids. They managed to swipe your gauntlets. Todoroki asked. I had to take them off cause they're too dangerous to be worn around them. The cougar yelled. Your nails are sharp a little girl said, pointing out Midoriya's hands. His nails were naturally pointed sharply, he kills after all. Way to point out the obvious Midoriya said, snatching his hand back and flying up. He can fly too, I thought he could just move really fast. Another kid shouted. Midoriya rested in the air and took a mental break. This one looks like an idiot a kid said pointing to Inasa. That isn't nice to say to your elders. Whatever Baldi. I'm not bald. Letting your true colors shine, of course what would you expect out of hero one-ups? They can't do hero stuff for squat, another blonde kid with blue eyes said. Shut it mini monoma Midoriya hissed. Who even is that? The kid asked. Midoriya teleported over to the rest of the group and sighed. We have to do something about these mutts. The kids, not mutts Inasa said. Yeah yeah. I say we find the ringleader of the group and tie him up, then we'll have the other kids throw rocks at him. The Kugo said. The Kugo they're just kids. Todoroki said. Well that's how I was raised and look I turned out completely fine. No, no Midoriya and Todoroki both said. Well we have to do something. The Kugo grunted. These high schoolers think they can beat us. I'm a prodigy and my class is full of kids with strong quirks, we'll show you. The younger Manama said. Attack them, with your quirks. He shouted as his class. Midoriya and the four turned around to face them as they were bombarded with offensive quirks. Midoriya dodged a little sharp ball that was thrown at his face with the swivel of his head, as other quirks began to hit them all at once. That'll show you all, we're stronger than you are. The blonde kid said. When the smoke cleared up it revealed all five of them, completely fine. After that Midoriya teleported Mirio to recovery girl where he was healed up. Midoriya had single-handedly beat Mirio, the same guy who took down the entire class fighting him at once. The class hated how Midoriya won, it only proved how much stronger he was. Something they hated. Don't get comfortable Deku, he went easy on you Kirishima spat. Midoriya rolled his eyes and walked away, drinking a packet of blood. Class was over, it was the end of the day anyways. Midoriya teleported to the dormitory. He was greeted by Fluffy, she purred at his side as he pet her. After that he walked over to the sink, washed his hands, and teleported to his room. He was pretty much done for the day. The next day. It was the end of the school day. Midoriya was tasked with taking out the trash. The sun was already beginning to set leaving the sky a beautiful gold. As he was getting close to the emptying area he felt a pair of eyes land on him. He turned his face just so see a face at the wall. It was Mirio, he was completely healed. Oh, Mirio Midoriya said sternly. 
Mirio walked out of the wall and lifted up some of the trash Midoriya was holding. I have a couple things I want so say Mirio began, looking at the ground in guilt. Midoriya raised his brow confused, what would Mirio want? Yes? Midoriya asked. I'm sorry for not helping you in the past. I always just watched and that was wrong of me. I know it's probably not enough considering what happened to you, but please forgive me, I've felt bad ever since I heard you died, Mirio said. You look like you're apologizing just to free the guilt trapped in your heart. You're not here for me to be happy, you're here to free yourself from your own chains, Midoriya thought to himself. Midoriya sighed, I forgive you. But I won't forget what you did. Mirio's face lit up with excitement, thank you. I have something else I want to say. Midoriya wore a confused and relaxed expression, now what? I want you to come in turn with me. You've heard of Sir Night Eye's agency right, All Might's former sidekick. He has a spot open and I want you to be the one to fulfill it. You have amazing thinking skills, because of that you were able to beat me yesterday, you didn't allow yourself to be predictable. That's amazing. So what do you say? Mirio said. A chance for me to get close with one of All Might's former friends. What horrific face would he make when he watches him die a gruesome death right in front of him? A perfect opportunity to figure out all of his weaknesses. Midoriya thought to himself. You okay? You just stared for a while Mirio asked. Oh sorry, yes I'll take the spot. When do I go with you? Midoriya asked. Tomorrow, after school. Don't be late. I'll be waiting for you outside of your dormitory Mirio replied. Alright then Midoriya said teleporting the trash away. Where did the trash go? Mirio asked. I teleported it away Midoriya replied. I was saving my teleport to be able to return to my dorm room, but I have to figure out how to stop this conversation as soon as possible. I don't need him to be following me anymore. Dot. Well you can teleport other things too, that's amazing, well. I'll leave you be since you're done your task, I bet you have other things to do, Mirio laughed as he sank back into ground. Midoriya let out a sigh as he transformed into a bat and flew up to his dorm room and entered from the balcony. He walked into the bathroom and washed his hands, he had just touched trash. Of course he'd wash his hands. Suddenly Midoriya's phone went off. He picked it up, it was from Kurajiri. We have an important meeting tonight at 12 a.m. You have to attend. Is what the text read. Alright, Midoriya replied. After that Midoriya just chilled in his room for the rest of the day, finishing up schoolwork. He wasn't very welcomed in the class, so he had no reason to go downstairs, all his food was in his room, not to mention all his stuff was there. Why would he go down if all that was going to happen was a big problem? He didn't feel like getting yet another suspension. Time skipped up. Midoriya began to get ready for the meeting. It was already 11.55 p.m. He was wearing a black hoodie, a black mask, and black pants. Not to mention a hat to cover that all up. He didn't want whoever he was meeting with to know who he was, only the League knew he was a secret villain in UA. He locked his door and teleported away. There he found the rest of the League patiently waiting. Am I late? Midoriya asked. Nah, but you were pulling loose ties, Dobby replied. Midoriya hummed in response as he leaned against the wall, waiting for whoever was supposed to come in. Once twelve hit the clock the door creaked open. In walked twice with the special guest. A brown-haired man with golden eyes, he was wearing a green jacket with a white t-shirt underneath, paired with some black pants. Then to top it all off he was wearing a very distinguishable plate mask. Kaichisaki. Here he is. Twice shouted. They closed the door and began the meeting. Hello, I'm Kaichisaki, leader of the Yakuza. He said. You're on the dot. Good, now we can get this started, Shigaraki said. Midoriya was the most relaxed out of them all, he had a reason to after all. If he can't die then he has nothing to fear, except for pain. You remember your old leader, Eifo. He was known as the ruler of the dark side, the strongest of us all. That's because he had a goal in mind. Shigaraki, what is your goal? Chisaki asked. To rule, have everyone cower in fear out of my name, he replied. And what steps are you gonna take to do that? Uh, I'll figure that out along the way. The goal without any steps is a mere wish. Hardly possible to fulfill. Shigaraki, make me your leader. I'll show you how to rule. I'll fulfill your goal. Chisaki proposed. No, I like my spot as leader Shigaraki hissed. How are you going to properly lead if you don't even have a plan? Chisaki asked. I don't need a plan. Childish. Make me your leader Chisaki spat, starting to get more pushy. No. Make me why Chisaki was cut off. Look bird beak, if you're gonna be repeating yourself you might as well just leave. Shigaraki is gonna be the leader of the love. Not you, I'm the actual planner here. Even if Shigaraki doesn't know the exact plan he can rely on me to make sure we don't mess up. So I suggest you stop Midoriya interjected, his crimson eyes radiated their ruby luminosity. And just who are you? 
Chisaki hiss. Not someone you need to know about. Midoriya scoffed. Look man, we like to work with you. Buchisaki flicked his hand up and exploded Magni into a million pieces. The rest of the league was triggered by the killing of their member. Compress ran straight at Chisaki and tried to compress him, but lost his arm in the process. Shigaraki then jumped up and tried to attack Chisaki, but a Yakuza member jumped up in front of him. Shigaraki ended up disintegrating the Yakuza member. A bullet was shot, aimed for Shigaraki, but it missed. Looks like this meeting is over. A loss on both sides, but I owe you an arm. Here's my business card, call me when you cooled off Shisaki said standing by the exit. Toga went running at him, but Shigaraki told her to stand down, she was confused. Shisaki and his members then left after that. Why didn't you let me stab him? Toga hissed. Yeah, he killed Magni. Spinner spat. Look, look at this bullet. It isn't like other bullets, this has something inside. Midoriya, I want you to dissect it. Shigaraki said. When? Midoriya asked. Tonight preferably. Midoriya sighed as he took the bullet from Shigaraki and looked all over it. I can't tell if the bullet is the thing that smells like blood, or it's the blood all over the floor, Midoriya grumbled. Let's leave. Kurajiri, open a warp gate, Shigaraki said. After that Kurajiri opened a warp gate and all of the league left. Midoriya took the bullet and began to sniff at it, he swore he smelled flesh and blood in it. He wasn't wrong either. It's the bullet that has blood in it. It doesn't smell like a poison. He made this using someone's direct DNA. I wouldn't be able to tell what it does from this unless we test it out on someone. It won't kill you though Midoriya said. Hmm. Test it out on muscular. Why me? You hardly do anything for the league, might as well. Midoriya walked over to muscular and stabbed him with the bullet. I don't feel a difference he said. Hmm. Use your quirk Midoriya said. This bullet is. My quirk. It would work. Muscular panicked. So that's what the bullet does. Maybe it'll wear off, calm down, Midoriya said. Quirk nullification bullets. This'll be useful, it's a good thing he didn't kill him, Shigaraki chuckled. Yeah but, whose blood is this made of? Midoriya questioned. That isn't our problem, Shigaraki sighed. Whatever, I'm off Midoriya said teleporting away. He went on his usual kill and sell. After he went to sleep back at the dorms. The next day after school. Midoriya found Mario casually waiting for him. Alright where to? Midoriya asked. His agency. And where is it? Why? Watch Midoriya said grabbing Mario's hand. He then teleported the both of them to the doorstep of the agency building. Well, guess we don't have to take the train. Here's a tip, make him laugh Mario suggested. Midoriya nodded his head as they went up the stairs to the office room. I'm pretty sure his quirk is future seeing. Though he has to touch you for it to work so as long as he doesn't touch me I'm fine Midoriya thought to himself. And just who are you? Sir Knight I asked. Izuku Midoriya, sir. The son of Dragon and Magenta. Take a seat Sir Knight I said. Midoriya nodded his head and grabbed a seat across from his desk. Mirio has been telling me how you wanted to work here. Why? Why should I allow you a former villain who's killed 11 people to work here? He asked. I've killed more than that, but whatever you should allow me to work here cause I'll prove to you that people can change. Hmm. <laughs> In order for you to work here you have to have me stamp a contract. Once that contract is stamped you'll be working full time here. You'll be getting paid and be treated like an actual hero. Anything you do will be directly reflected on me he said as he aggressively tapped the stamp on the table next to the box that has to be stamped. I understand sir Midoriya said. Hmm. If you can stamp this paper yourself I'll allow you to work here, he said as he tried to get a touch on Midoriya. Midoriya transformed into a bat fast though, not giving him the chance to touch him. It seems you understand how my quirk works night I sighed as he held the stamp. Midoriya flew back and bit and transformed back to normal. You're giving me quite an easy task, are you sure? Midoriya chuckled. I can assure you. You won't be able to steal this stamp from my hands sir night I said. Midoriya chuckled as he held his hand out. I can and I will Midoriya said as he teleported the stamp and contract to his hand. How did you do that, isn't your quirk transformation? Sir Knight I asked. Midoriya stamped the paper and let a laugh slip past his lips. It seems you don't know much about me. I'm a vampire, Jay have multiple abilities that come with this. But if you're able to teleport shouldn't you only be able to teleport your physical self? He asked. If I know exactly where an object is I can teleport it to me at any given time. Midoriya replied. Interesting. Well, as you have stamped the paper and successfully stole the lock I'll allow you to work here. Here is your timesheet. Midoriya was handed a paper full of his schedule for the week and weeks to come. Thank you sir. Midoriya said as he put the paper into his bag. I don't allow anyone to be late. 
If you're late even once even by a second your contract will be ripped sir night I concluded. Midoriya nodded his head and walked out with Mirio. Midoriya had gotten what he wanted. The ability to figure out all of All Might's former sidekick's weaknesses and use it against him. More was yet to come. Midoriya looked over his timesheet and groaned. He didn't like his schedule at all. Monday. 9.30 a.m. 5.30 p.m. Tuesday. 3.30 to 11.30 p.m. Wednesday. 9.30 a.m. 5.30 p.m. Thursday. 3.30 to 11.30 p.m. Friday. 9.30 a.m. 5.30 p.m. Saturday. 8 p.m. 3 a.m. Sunday. 5.30 p.m. 12 a.m. You are expected to be on time every day. Dot that was his timetable. That meant he only had school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, due to the fact he'd be on shift every other day. He forced the paper to memory, and then hung it up inside his closet wall, so he'd never forget in case. It was a Wednesday that day which meant tomorrow he'd have to go after school. The next day. The school day went by smoothly. Nothing interesting happened, nothing out of the ordinary either. The bullying didn't end, but at least Midoriya was no able to not get hurt. The Kuga was back in class, mad as ever that Midoriya got into an internship before everyone else. After school Midoriya quickly got changed into his hero outfit. He ran outside and found Mirio waiting for him. Why were you waiting? He asked. I thought we were going on the train. Mirio said. It's too late for that, I was planning on teleporting Midoriya said. Okay then. Midoriya then teleported the both of them to Sir Night Eye's office with 10 minutes to spare. Good. You're on time. Let's get started. Today we're investigating this man Sir Night Eye said. He pulled out papers of Kaichisaki. Midoriya's eyes slightly widened. He's in the gray area, suspected of producing and selling drugs. He recently had a meet up with the League, but it seems like they got into some fight. There is no evidence to properly accuse him yet, so we're tasked to find that Sir Night Eye said. How would he know that? Midoriya thought to himself. Understood. He asked. Midoriya and Mario both nodded their heads yes. Good. Now follow me Sir Night Eye said. With that, Sir Night Eye lead them all outside and took them to where they would have to investigate. Come back to me when there is anything suspicious. Sir Night Eye said. Midoriya nodded his head as Mirio hummed in response. They then went for their shift. As they were walking they took note of anything suspicious. Thirty minutes go by and something strange happens. A little girl comes running out of the alleyway next to Midoriya. She bumped into Midoriya tears in her crimson eyes. She had a horn on the side of her head, she was covered in bandages, she wore a white dress, her white silverish hair was down. Midoriya paused for a second and kneeled down to the girl. She smells like fresh blood, kinda like the stuff I smelled in the drug. If that's true then Midoriya looked up to see Kai Chisaki staring right back at him. Haha sorry about that. He said. It's fine, is she okay? Mirio asked. Yes, she was just having one of her tantrums. I'll get her off your heels, I bet you're all busy Chisaki said. Yeah of course Mirio chuckled. She smells like blood and flesh, the same blood and flesh as to what was in the bullet. She's covered in bandages, is scared, crying, and it's with Chisaki. Chisaki is making the bullets out of her which means. She has to be taken away from him Midoriya thought to himself. Even though Midoriya was a villain and was plotting an even revenge, he wasn't about to let a child get cut up for no reason. Mirio. This girl, she smells like blood. Like she's been cut repetitively. Chisaki is using her for something, she's our perfect evidence. I'm going to teleport her to the agency. Chisaki won't be able to attack us in the broad daylight, Midoriya said telepathically. Mirio wore a scared expression. I'll be taking her back now, Chisaki said as he tapped in his wrist, trying to signal the girl to come to her side. Could you tell me why she's covered in bandages? Midoriya asked, lifting up the girl and standing up. What's your name? He said telepathically to the girl. Iri, she whispered. Only Midoriya could hear her. Iri is an undoubtedly clumsy girl. Chisaki shrugged it off. Prepare yourself for anything Mario Midoriya said telepathically as he teleported the girl into the safe room of the agency. Chisaki grew enraged. Where is my daughter? He hissed pulling off his gloves. Your daughter smelled of blood and it was obvious she has been cut. You're losing custody today, if you attack we can take you to prison Midoriya hissed. Chisaki sprang at Midoriya, but Midoriya transformed into a bat and kicked his stomach, sending him into the alleyway. Midoriya then grabbed Mirio, after transforming back, and sped across the town looking for Sir Night Eye. Once he found him he teleported all three of them to the safe room of the agency. What's are you doing Midoriya? Sir Night Eye asked confused. This girl. She's our evidence Midoriya said. Eri was curled up into a ball crying. Why is there a girl here? He asked. SHH, let me explain. Midoriya hiss. Sir Night Eye furred his brow in confusion. 
This girl smells like fresh blood. She's been cut up. She was crying when we found her, and she didn't want to let go of me. She's our evidence that shows Shisaki is doing something illegal, he explained. How would you know she smells like blood? Sir Knight, I asked. Midoriya sighed and showed his fangs. I'm a vampire. My senses are heightened and I drink blood. Oh? So now what? Mirio asked. Well, we have to ask the girl what happened. Not to mention, if Shisaki is using her blood for something he's likely to try to take her back. Midoriya, don't ever do that again. Acting on impulse leads to failure. Sid Knight I spat. Hey Ari, mind telling us what happened? Midoriya asked. Small tears began to trickle from Miri's face. HEC cut me he's you using M might be blood F for D drugs, she stuttered. Sir Knight Eye's eyes widened at what he heard, recently there's been a case of Red Bull is cancelling quirks. Eerie, do you mind if we lift up your bandages? Sir Knight Eye asked. Eerie just held out her arms and looked away. He carefully removed the bandage on her arm, revealing a bunch of incision marks. He gasped at the sight. Eerie, do you trust us? He asked. She looked up at them, slight fear lingering in her eyes. Why you won't each hurt me? Right, she asked. We're heroes of course we won't, Mirio said, wearing a golden smile. Iri's eyes widened, she had been rescued. I trust you, she said. Good. Now, follow me. We're going to take you to UA, Sir Knight, I said. UA. You'll be a great help. You see the man that had you was suspected to be a drug dealer. You're the evidence that he's a villain, with you. We can arrest him, he said. Iri's eyes filled with hope as she felt a weight get lifted off her chest. Okay, she said. She got up and followed Sir Nighteye. Midoriya and Mario were acting as guards as they escorted her to a car, and all drove off to UA. Sir Nighteye was on the phone with Nezu, he was calling a meeting with all the heroes also working on the case. They drove off to UA where a bunch of heroes were already waiting inside the conference room. Mary's eyes shone with astonishment as she walked down the hall to the conference room. Eventually they made it in and began to meeting. Who is she? Rocklock asked. He was pointing at Eri who was nervously standing behind Mirio. She is our evidence that Kai Chisaki is a villain. He used this girl to make quirk destroying drugs. Iri, will you care to explain what you were put through? Sir Knight I said. He. Cut me. Every day. I overhead him. He said he uses me for drugs I don't know what the drugs do, but I heard they do something bad I've been there for years now she said. Everyone's eyes widen when they heard little Iri, what a horrific story she went through. But wait, if she's with us now. Doesn't that make that Chisaki guy will try to get her back? Rocklock asked. Precisely. That is why she's going to be staying here, UA has one of the best security systems in all of Japan. He wouldn't be able to get to her if she's out of reach, Sir Knight I said. Have we discovered where his hideout is? We have to arrest him for what he's done to the girl Fatim asked. With Fatim was Kirishima and Tumaki. Not yet, that is why we're going to be doing more investigation. Once we find his hideout we'll raid it, Sir Knight I said. If he launches a planned attack on UA what do we do? Ryukyu asked. With her was Asubi and Yuraka. The two were giving Midoriya subtly glares, but he didn't care. I doubt he'd be able to get through the gates alone. Though if he does then we'll simply attack right back. It's only one of him versus over ten of us. Sir Knight I replied. Where in UA will she be staying? Fatim asked. The only open rooms we have are the ones in class 1 as dorm. Every other dorm room has no extra rooms, Nezu interjected. So she'll be staying with class 1A. It's settled. In the meantime I want all of you to be investigating, if you find anything that can lead us to the capturing of Kai Chisaki bring it forward tonight I concluded. Everyone nodded their heads. Midori internally groaned, he saved the girl, but at what cost? He had a lingering feeling that the girl was scared of him as well. Though he wasn't 100% sure of it. After that Eerie was taken to the dorms. Her room was set up and she was given food and things she needs. She was also forced to wear a quirk cancelling bracelet. She had informed them she had no control of her dangerous quirk, and they didn't want to take any risks. With the bracelet there is also a tracker installed so if she does manage to get lost, she'd be easily found. It was made like Midoriya's sunlight blocker bracelet, impossible to break. The next day dot. Midoriya was gone for most of the day due to the fact he was on shift, it was a Friday afternoon when he finally came back. As he walked into the dorm room he made eye contact with Eerie. She was playing with Fluffy, it was the first time she's ever seen a cat. Panic surged through her eyes as she quickly got up and ran to her room which was on the bottom floor. She locked the door and hid under her blanket for a bit. Midoriya let out a sharp sigh as Fluffy jumped up and rubbed against his legs. He pet her and went to his room. Eri was scared of Midoriya and he didn't know why. It was a Saturday. Midoriya had a shift much later in the night. So he was able to do pretty much anything he wanted during the day. 
He grabbed a blood bag from his mini fridge and went downstairs, wearing a black t-shirt and blue jeans. It was an early Saturday morning, the only time he has before the class begins to wake up. He drank the blood bag as he scrolled through his phone on the kitchen counter. He felt a pair of fearful eyes watching him, he turned his head and found Eri. She was on the verge of tears and looked as if she had seen a ghost. Midoriya lifted the blood bag away from his mouth and raised his brow, what's wrong Eri? He asked. She flinched hearing his voice and ran away, tears streaming down her face in fear. Midoriya shrugged his shoulders and continued to drink the contents of the bag. As always sleepily opened the fridge that was to the side of Midoriya. There he noticed Eri peeping from behind a wall. Still scared. Eri what's wrong? Azawa asked noticing the fear in her eyes. She pointed at Midoriya and hid her face in her hands. Azawa raised his brow and looked at Midoriya. What did you do? Nothing she's just scared. I don't even know what I did Midoriya replied, throwing the blood bag in the trash beneath him. That's odd. Eri, do you want to tell me why you're scared? Azawa asked. A chest drinking blood he has scary eyes there like. That man's eyes she whimpered. That man she was referring to was Shisaki. Midoriya's eyes looked normal to everyone else, though she saw a great rage burning within them. One that could kill with just looks. Eri, Midoriya won't hurt you. Trust me, he's not like Shisaki. Azawa said reassuring her. I can't she cried running off again. I don't know what's going on Midoriya sighed. Has she always acted scared in front of you? Azawa asked. When we first met, no. But right after that she's always ran away when she saw me Midoriya replied. That is odd. I'll look into it. You didn't do anything for her to be so scared, as always sighed grabbing a juice bag and walking away. Midoriya nodded his head as he teleported to the sofa and used his phone. Azawa found Yeri huddled under her blanket and slowly peeping to check who was at her door. He shut the door behind him and stood across her bed. Yeri, why are you scared of him? Azawa asked again. His eyes they look so scary Yeri replied. What do you mean? They're the same color as yours Azawa asked confused. No, it's not the color I don't know. It's just scary she said. Look, Midoriya isn't a bad person. He saved you remember that. You shouldn't be scared whenever you see him alright. Good. Now come on Azawa concluded. Eri just nodded her head and followed Azawa out of her room. Midoriya had overhead their entire conversation. She's scared of my eyes. What about them? Midoriya thought to himself as he rested on the couch. Eri came out of her room, holding on tight to Azawa as she saw Midoriya rested on the couch. She flinched as Midoriya's gaze landed on hers. Midoriya only shrugged his shoulders and got back to using his phone. He would have stayed down there longer but. He got an urgent text from Shigaraki. At the same time Kugo came downstairs. Midoriya teleported to his room and read the message. Chisaki said the thing helping with his drug production is now gone and at UA. Do you know what it is? Shigaraki texted. Yeah, don't work with the sicko anymore. He makes the drug out of a little girl. He does. Hmm, I doubt he'd be able to get the girl back considering where she is. I guess we could call off the deal and focus on upgrading or Nomu. How much more money do you need till you reach your goal? 10 million yen. I should be able to make it within 3 weeks. Just before the festival. Good. We'll focus on that instead. Alright, need anything else? Nah. After that Midoriya went back to using his phone as he usually would. I'm calling off our deal Shigaraki said over the phone. No wait, I'll get what I need back Shisaki spat. Nope, deal's off. If you even try to attack me I'll kill you and your entire gang, Shigaraki concluded ending the call. Chisaki slammed his phone against the wall in anger. I'm going to get you back Yuri. Just you wait he thought to himself as he stormed off to his lab. Time skip. 5 p.m. Midoriya had to get ready for his shift. He got into his hero outfit and teleported away. He found Sir Night Eye talking with Mirio. About himself. He hid behind the doorway and listened in. Look, I know Midoriya changed, but All Might says he suspects something with him. I trust All Might more than him so I want you to get any information on him. If you find anything suspicious report it immediately Sir Night I said. Sir, I doubt Midoriya is planning anything but if you say so. Anyways, are we still going to investigate the missing cases? Mirio asked. Yes, the Chisaki mission will have to be on hold until he makes a move. For now I want you and Midoriya to investigate all the missing cases, police said it's all one person doing this kidnapping, due to how the people go missing and the time. Night I replied. Midoriya nervously sweat as he listened in. He didn't know how he'd keep his cover from being blown when he has to investigate his own crimes. Midoriya shrugged it off and came walking in. The early Sir Night I commented. I had nothing to do at UA, I might as well start my shift already Midoriya said. Okay well today instead of investigating Chisaki I want you and Mirio to investigate all the missing cases. 
It's starting to get out of hand. Over 40 people have gone missing all by the same door. The other heroes are investigating the Chisaki case, so don't worry about it. The only evidence we have so far is the time the person goes missing. It's always at around 3 to 4 a.m. Then the person goes missing without a trace. Since your shift goes into 3 a.m. you guys should be able to get some better evidence. Remember, if you find anything suspicious report it to me Sir Knight I explained. Midoriya nodded his head. Hmm, what if it's a group of people doing these kidnappings? I doubt a single person would be able to kidnap over 40 people all alone, Midoriya said, trying to remove any trace of suspicion against him. You may be right. Considering these people have gone missing within the span of a couple weeks, it isn't far a stretch to believe it's multiple people. Anyways, you still have to investigate. So go Sir Knight I concluded. Midoriya and Mario both nodded their heads and headed out. They walked down the streets of Tokyo, where most of the kidnappings seemed to be happening. Midoriya chose Tokyo as the spot for kidnapping people, since most people seemed to be out late at night there. Won't it be suspicious if the kidnapping stopped for one day every week, due to the fact I am on shift? It'll make me a main suspect I have to split up, away from Mario, so I can kidnap someone properly. If I don't I'll be to sus Midoriya thought to himself. The sun was already beginning to set, leaving the sky a golden glaze. So Midoriya, what do you like to do in your free time? Mirio asked. Midoriya was broken out of his train of thought and looked up at Mirio. Nothing really, I don't have friends at school so it's not like I can do much. I'm pretty much on my phone most of the time he replied. What do you do on your phone Mirio asked. Just look at random posts, why? Midoriya replied. I'm just wondering, you seem like an interesting guy. How's Yuri doing? He asked. She's fine, though she's scared of me. Something about my eyes. Midori replied. She's scared of you. Odd. I think it's cause I drank blood in front of her. Drank blood. I'm dot a vampire. How does no one notice? I have fangs, red cat eyes, and I have multiple abilities. Midori sighed. What does that have to do with drinking blood? It's my diet, I can't eat human food. Though, sorry if I seemed rude. It's fine. Anyways, I say we split up. We'll be able to cover more ground and search at a faster rate Midoriya suggested, pausing his walk. Mirio put his hand to his chin and looked up at the sky, pondering if he should agree. Eh hey, why not? Remember to report anything you find Mirio said. Midoriya nodded his head and teleported away. No wonder All Might suspects him. He drinks blood. Though, that isn't enough of a reason to suss him of anything. We'll see how tonight goes, I doubt he's the one behind all these kidnappings like All Might had suggested. If someone doesn't go missing today next week, and a week after then we can properly accuse him and take him to the station. Tsukauchi will be able to ask him questions, and we'll find out if he's guilty, Mirio thought to himself. Midoriya reappeared in a different street. He began his walk. He shouldn't be able to suspect me of anything with what I told him. Though I have to kidnap someone. I'm in my hero outer though, and I can't kidnap someone when it's barley sunset. I'll have to follow my pattern. But I wouldn't be able to kill them and then take them, it takes time, and Mirio might come in. I'll have to teleport them to the secret base. It's too big of a labyrinth for them to escape, not to mention all the doors are locked. Then when the shift is over I'll return to UA, pretend to be asleep, and kill them at 4.30am. I can sell their parts tomorrow night Midoriya thought to himself. He was putting a lot of thought into it, he didn't want to be caught after all. He decided that when the time comes he'll transform into a dark smoke and hid in an alleyway. When a person comes walking through he'll teleport them away and then fly out. Time skipped up. 12 AM. Mario continued to go through his shift. He was now looking for Midoriya. He didn't see him for the past 7 hours and was concerned. Midoriya knew he was probably feeling such so he teleported to him, startling Mario in the process. Did you find anything? He asked. Midoriya had already did what he needed to do with the kidnapping. That person he kidnapped was helplessly in the labyrinth of the base. No, not yet Midori replied. Twenty minutes go by as they walk together, and Mirio's phone goes off. He lifts it up and reads the message from Sir Nidai. Another person has gone missing, did you see anything he texted? No. Dang it. Someone's been kidnapped Mirio said, letting out an exhausted sigh. Really where Midori asked. Far from here since we haven't seen it. Which reminds me, how are you able to see? You're not wearing any form of goggles that could help unlike me Mirio said. I have night vision, I am a vampire. Oh? Your shift is over now. If they already kidnapped someone there is a low chance they'd kidnap anyone else. Come to me and report anything you saw. And things on Midoriya as well. You can tell Midoriya to return to you a Sir Night I said. Alright I'll see you in a bit. Midoriya, Sir Night I said our shift is over now. You can head straight to you a, I'll see you tomorrow. 
Okay, see ya. Midoriya then teleported away. Perfect. After that, Midori returned to Yue and relaxed for a bit. He knew he'd have to go deal with his hostage, but he decided to wait a little. He had a feeling someone would be coming into his dorm room while he should be asleep. He wasn't wrong either. At 3am, Midori was lying down on his bed. Suddenly Mario's scent became way stronger, more than it should have been. He quickly closed his eyes and pretended to be asleep. He's still here. Well it can't be him then, if that were true he'd be gone as I'm here. Though one single night isn't enough evidence. I'll have to check every day Mario thought to himself as he sank back away into the ground. Midoriya opened his eyes when he could no longer smell Mirio. It's a good thing I listened to be gut instinct. It'd be horrible if he didn't find me here Midoriya thought to himself as he aggressively sniffed the air. He was triple checking to make sure Mirio had really left. Once he was certain Mirio was gone he changed into his clothes and teleported to his base. He found the hostage in the main room trying to break free, but it was no use. Midoriya quickly killed them off, drinking all of their blood. He then did what he always did, sold it off to the market. After that he returned to Yue and fell asleep. The next day, Midoriya woke up as he usually would. He went downstairs and did his usual. There he found Iri, still scared of him. Why does he seem so scary she thought to herself as she looked into Midoriya's eyes. She couldn't put her finger on it, but whenever she looked at Midoriya she could only sense something scary, something cold, something being caged. Something being fed until it's ready to come out. Vengeance radiated off Midoriya, Iri was scared of it. Iri? Are you going to keep staring at me? He asked. Iri flinched and ran away. Midoriya shrugged it off and threw his blood bag into the trash can. As he was happily relaxing in the Sunday morning he suddenly heard a large explosion outside. Concerned he gets up and looks out the window, there was nothing there. Though something was off. He could feel it. Chisaki is attacking was the first thought that came to Midoriya. He quickly teleported to Izawa and forced him awake. Chisaki is attacking he said casually. Okay Izawa said, the words hadn't registered quite yet. Wait wh Izawa was cut off by a large scream in the main room of the dormitory. Where are you Iri? He screamed. Midoriya let out a groan as Chisaki stood in the main room full of rage. Izawa ran to the main room and found Chisaki aggressively throwing stuff on the ground. Calm down will you, it's a dormitory not your home, Izawa sighed, cancelling his quirk. Midoriya came running in with him. You? Where's Yuri? Chisaki spat. Suddenly another Yakuza member came busting through the door, shattering it. Midoriya teleported to the side Yakuza as he noticed it was headed straight for Izawa, and knocked it out with a strong blow to the head. The Kugo, Kirishima, and Siro came running down the stairs upon the loud noises. Chisaki charged at Izawa and was about to hit him when the Kugo exploded Chisaki, and Kirishima pushed Izawa out of the way. Due to the fact Izawa blinked Chisaki was able to use his quirk again. He slapped the ground, spikes cutting right through Izawa and Kirishima. Blood filled the air, Midoriya quickly sounded the alarm calling in other heroes. Where are you Iri? Chisaki spat. Midoriya teleported to her and tried to calm her down. Iri, as much as I know you're scared of me you're gonna have to trust me for now. Chisaki is after you but I know a safe place. Midoriya said. Iri was crying, but when she looked into Midoriya's eyes, she didn't see the same cold vengeance. Instead she saw a raging fury, but a safe one. She nodded her head, Midoriya was about to teleport her, but Chisaki slapped the ground and used the ground to snatch her away. Midoriya tried to go after her, but then a spike was sent at him, he transformed into a bat dodging it all together. He jumped as Chisaki, transformed back, and bit his arm breaking his arm in the process. Midoriya spat out his blood, it didn't taste good. Chisaki had the blood type Midoriya didn't like at all. You fiend. Chisaki spat as he reformed his arm. Midoriya teleported out of the way of Chisaki's attack. The Kugo went zooming at Chisaki, he hit him with a one-for-all powered explosion, an explosion strong enough to take down a building. Iri was still stuck in the reformed ground. More and more Yakuza members started to come in. It was becoming a tight fight. Midoriya dodging and attacking left and right, the Kugo trying to break Iri out, Kirishima blocking attacks for Bakugo, as Awo bleeding out, Tokoyami trying to help any way possible, and Todoroki not knowing what to do. It's over now pathetic heroes. Iri belongs to me, Chisaki boomed. The Kugo was already panting like a dog, everyone was already exhausted. Why? Because of a Yakuza member's quirk. Chisaki grabbed Yuri out of the ground and was about to head out when Midoriya delivered a solid kick to his face. He sent him flying back, but the grasp on Yuri wouldn't loosen. You just never learned do you Chisaki spat. As Chisaki was about to send a spike at Midoriya a familiar voice was heard. Pui or Mirio shouted, shooting out of the ground and punching Chisaki. More and more heroes began to come in through the front door. 
Nidai Fat and Rock Lock, Ryukyu, etc. Chisaki still didn't let go of Iri. If even one of you make a move, I'll kill her, he said, putting his hand on her head. Iri was mortified, her eyes dripping of fear. Dot, this is Midoriya here, hey. He won't kill her, she's too important for his project. It's a fake threat, Midoriya said through telepath. It looks like you all caught on. Well, even if I don't kill her, I'll make sure to hurt her. I'll make her limbless, he threatened. He would do that, Midoriya said through telepath. Everyone was frozen, they didn't know what to do. Midoriya closed his eyes and took a deep breath in. He'd need a lot of energy for this one. What's that? He said pointing at the wall behind Chisaki. What's what? Chisaki asked turning his head around. With his guard lowered Midoriya quickly teleported Iri out of his hands and to Hawk's agency. Where is she? He screamed shooting himself at Midoriya. Fatim jumped in front of Midoriya, he thought he was going to die but. Azawa activated his cork just in time. Chisaki bounced off of Fatim and into the wall, Rock Lock pounced at him and punched him while his guard was lowered. Bakugo sent an explosion, Tokoyami used Dark Shadow to punch him, Todoroki froze him, Midoriya broke the ice and kicked Chisaki, and Kirishima delivered the knocking out blow. They defeated Chisaki. Amar Azawa are you okay? Kirishima asked as Azawa still laid on the ground, bleeding. Call. An ambulance Azawa said before he passed out. Using Dark Shadow, Tokoyami lifted Chisaki's knocked out body and threw him in the police car waiting outside. The police put court cancelling cuffs on him and tied him up. Azawa was rushed to the hospital, he was the only one who got seriously hurt. Who are you? Hawks asked as he stared at Iri. Iri just stared back at him. Suddenly his phone rang. Hello? It's me Midoriya. There's a girl there right? Yeah but who is she? Iri, the girl Chisaki was abusing. I teleported her to you cause that's the only spot I knew of. Oh? I'm assuming he attacked then. Yeah but we subdued him, and now he's being taken to prison. Good. I'll fly her over now. Hawk ended the call and walked up to Yuri. Yuri flinched in fear she didn't know who this winged man was. Hey, I'm going to take you back to Yue. Follow me, he said. Yuri just nodded her head and followed him. He took her outside, picked her up, and flew through. Her little eyes widened at the beautiful sight of the city. They shone with awe. Eventually he made it to Yue and dropped her off. Midoriya was there waiting. His eyes were no longer the same as when he rescued her again, the burning rage. They were back to being as cold and as vengeful as ever. If not even more. Hey kid Hawks said as he put Eerie down. Hey Hawks, Midori replied. What happened? He asked. I'd rather not say it in front of her. Midori said. Hawks hummed in agreement as he signaled for someone to take Eerie away. Todoroki scooped her up and left. Basically, Chisaki attacked. The only one who got hurt was Izawa Sensei, but he was taken to the hospital. Inside Cementos is doing some renovation. He was after Iri so I teleported her to you, since it was the only safe spot I knew of Midoriya explained. Oh, is everyone good now? Yeah. Alright then I'm off. Has your agency progressed in figuring out who's behind the kidnappings? Hawks asked. No, we're still in knots. Dang. We'll see you Hawks said flying off. Midoriya teleported to his room and let out a sigh of relief. Now they wouldn't have to worry about Chisaki. Suddenly his phone went off. It was from Shigaraki. There was a picture of him, Dobby, and Compress posed over an armless Shisaki. Midoriya let out a little chuckle. He had bigger problems at hand. After all of that everything returned to somewhat of a normal. Iri was trained how to use her quirk, so she didn't have to wear the bracelet. At the internships all the agencies were focused on one thing. The missing cases. So far all we know is this villain strikes at 12.3 am, and always disappears without a trace. It's starting to become an even bigger issue, why? Cause recently the torso of all the victims have been found in a river. All limbless with the insides taken out. Police are suspecting the bodies are being sold on the market, but they don't know where to find it. Due to this fact I'm sorry, but we're all going to work overtime and at night. It's the only time the villain strikes. Midori and Mario, your schedules are going to be drastically changed. I hope you two can keep up with it. Sir Knight I was addressing the situation in a big meeting with a bunch of other hero agencies including Hawks Agency. Sir, what do we do if we can't find this person? Midoriya asked. We'll have no other choice but to launch a lockdown on Tokyo, Sir Nidai replied. Midoriya hummed in response as he looked down at the ground. No one's suspecting me so far. Let's keep it this way. Though, I already reached my money goal. All I have to do now is buy and set everything up. Once that's done we can get this show on the road, Midoriya thought to himself. Yesterday he had finally reached his goal with the total money needed. Why don't I play a little game? I'll get everything ready at first, then once I'm certain everything is done I'll start dropping hints. 
Once they figure out it's me I'll start it. Dot. Now, I want you all to go to your assigned locations and try to find anything Sir Knight I concluded. Midoriya had zoned out, but he knew he was partnered with someone. He was partnered with Kirishima. He. Didn't. Like. It. At. All. So there they were. 10 AM. On the street. Watching random cars go by. Look Deku. I don't want to work with you. So I'm splitting up I don't want to be around a nasty bloodsucker. Kirishima hissed walking away. I really don't care Midori replied walking the other direction. The kid wasn't kidding. His class hates him for no reason Hawks said. He too was assigned by Sir Night Eye to do another examination on Midori. He couldn't really argue with him because Night Eye was firm on his decision. Hawks is here. He's a horrible hider Midori thought to himself as he walked down the street. Hawks flew above Midori in the clouds. Right, so I have to make it look like I'm searching right now. Until the coast is clear. Once the coast is clear I can take a short break. But for now. I have to play a castle Midori thought to himself as he continued to walk. The kid won't do anything. I'm certain. I'll leave Hawks thought to himself as he flew off. Midori let out a sigh once he could no longer smell Hawks. He continued to walk and then teleported out. He had an idea. Midori reappeared in a different street far from where he originally was. He looked around for anyone that could seem suspicious, and then teleported a strand of hair from their head into his hand. He also made sure the person had a speed quirk, how? He watched the person run off faster than a normal person could have. After that he walked into an alleyway and shapeshifted into someone else, someone random. Then he went on looking for a victim. Once that was found he kidnapped them as he always would, then left the strand of hair there. He pulled out his phone and called Hawks. He flew there immediately. He melted back to his original form before Hulk saw him. I witnessed the kidnapping I couldn't see who it was. I think they have a speed quirk. They left this hair though. Midoriya said handing Hawks a strand of hair. Good work kid. This'll help a lot. Hawk said quickly grabbing the air and sealing it in a bag. Midoriya just nodded his head. Continue to investigate. I'll take this to the station Hawks instructed. Midoriya then walked off to continue his work. That worked better than I thought it would. Now when they arrest that guy I can leave another sign saying something like wrong guess. Tonight I gotta buy everything and set it up so I won't have to worry Midoriya thought to himself as he continued down the street. Midoriya thought of numerous ways to lead the heroes to finding out who he really is, who the real villain is. But he wasn't going to let it be as simple as 1 plus 1. No has going to make it so overly complex that only he'd be able to figure it out. Until they all team up and figure it out. After 2 hours everyone was called to the police station. The evidence Midoriya found was about to be put under trial. Midoriya, do you have any idea on what the villain's face looked like? Hawks asked. Everyone was there, sitting behind a table as the hair gets put under a DNA test. I seriously have no idea. It was all a blur, I made it there just as they left Midoriya replied. It doesn't matter. This DNA test should give us the villain's identity, Night Eye interrupted. Midoriya hummed in response as the results got printed out and handed to Night Eye. Cat hair. Gender. Mail. Quirk. Sonic speed. An ex-con. Night I read the paper out loud. Next to the name was a picture of a man with straight black hair, crystal white eyes, and a pointed chin. So that's the person we have to bring in for questioning. Kirishima asked. Yes. After that the police brought in the man. Tsukauchi took it from there and everyone else was dismissed. Later. Night. 3 AM. Midoriya was up on his phone. He has gotten everything he needed from a dealer that comes into the league's base time to time. His bedroom floor was littered in torture weapons, poison, and the security system he was going to use against the school. Now all that was left was to set everything up. The festival was in one week. That's when Midoriya is going to begin his plan. Midoriya melted into another person, the ex-con from earlier in the day. After he grabbed the security system and set it up all around the dormitory in UA. He planned to let the rest of the school run, except for Monoma in Class 1A. If anything he was just going to kill everyone else. But he wanted to torture the singled out ones personally. He teleported all the torture weapons to his secret base, he had already killed the person he kidnapped earlier in the day. He put the weapons in a designated room. He liked to call it his weapon chamber. He then put the poison in his lab. After that everything was ready and he was satisfied. All it took was a push of a button, and the security system will force active and trap everyone. Midoriya teleported into a random alleyway, wearing gloves. He had a plan. He had a dead victim's body next to him, but he didn't kill it was he always would. No this time he killed using a knife. The same knife he bought before going to camp. Using the victim's blood he wrote out. You got the wrong P-E-R-S-O-N. 
you're running out of time. And with that he returned to Yue, showered, and went to sleep. Later. I understand I gave you all the new schedules, but this was an emergency. Sir Knight I began. What happened? Mirio asked. The person we found yesterday wasn't the kidnapper despite how he responded to the questions. He committed a different crime unrelated to these mysterious kidnappings. We know this because... This is what he found Sir Knight I said, showing a picture of the blood-written letters. They all gasped at the bloody sight. We read what the blood had written. It says you got the wrong person, you're running out of time indicating something horrible is coming in the future. We don't know what exactly is coming. We believe it's a war call, the entire time they didn't communicate with us. They made sure to leave no evidence. But now all of a sudden we've gotten a clear message from them. Sir Knight I explained. What do we do if they don't leave another message? Midoriya asked. We'll just continue with what we're doing. We don't have much of another choice. Though I did hear the police are starting to put cameras in alleyways. We should be able to catch them in the act from there Sir Knight I concluded. After that the meeting was dismissed. They all had their shifts later in the day. Midoriya had missed most of his classes, so Azawa dismissed him from going to the other two classes he had left. After that Midoriya left more and more hints each day. Slowly leading all of them up to the moment he's been waiting for. Sunday. One day before festival. So far we know five things. It's a guy, he's planning an attack, his quirk is special, he's hidden, and... He's related to two heroes. Sir Knight I announced. That could be anyone Hawks groaned. The student interns weren't there. It was only the pro heroes. The students had been overworked and overwhelmed, so they decided to give them a break. The cameras picked up a cloaked figure, 5-5 five five from what it seems. But the eyes are always a different color indicating he's wearing a disguise Hawks added. It was late at night. 11 p.m. But who would it be? For all we know it could be someone from the league Ryuku said. We don't know. And it's a problem. Sir, Knight I said. Midoriya sat in his room, wearing a grin. He was finally going to be able to get revenge. The sweet revenge he's been waiting for since forever. The next day. 8 a.m. The class was chattering with excitement as they got the final touches done on their project for the festival. They were doing a cookout, everyone in class 1B versus everyone in class 1A. It would begin at 9. Midoriya wore an outfit he bought with the torture weapons underneath the hoodie. It was a pristine suit. Fire resistant as well. The heroes are discussing one for clue they found at 3am at night of the same day. 8.39am. Midoriya held the button in his pockets, careful to not press the button just yet. The heroes were coming close to figuring it out with the riddle they got. I'm someone you'd never suspect. As safe as I seen these claws speak different. Who would it be? 8.54 a.m. Midoriya found a good microphone and made sure it was attached to speakers he set up around the school. 8.58 a.m. Wait the clues. 5-5, five five, someone we'd never expect, blood, the times, a plan, and a change in eye color. It's Midoriya. 59. 9 a.m. Class 1 of vs Class 1B cookout will now begin. No, it won't. No it won't Midoriya said through a speaker. The class turned to him confused as they eat he the hoodie he was wearing get ripped off of him with his own hands. He was in the air, flying. Now the moment I have been waiting for Midoriya laughed psychotically as he pressed the button. Midoriya, what's your problem? Hiroshima hissed. Suddenly there was a rumble in the ground as Midoriya stared at the crowd. Suddenly a black dome-like barrier shot up into the air all around the school and trapped everyone inside. You're all my hostages now Midoriya laughed through the speaker. What just happened? Momo asked as she looked around. Midoriya then pressed another button. When that happened a bunch of things started to get shot out of the walls and grabbed onto all the students, toppling them down to the ground and leaving them immobilized. Now you all may be wondering, Midoriya what are you doing? Well guess what? I am tired of you all. The months of torment, the isolation, the disrespect. I am tired of it all. And today. I'll finally get what I've been wanting from the start. Revenge. Midoriya chuckled. Fear was instilled into everyone there, Midoriya had been plotting this since he came back hadn't he? Azawa wasn't on the scene, Midoriya had locked him inside of his room, and barricaded it with stuff on the inside and out. Midoriya. We both know you aren't strong enough to be able to kill us all Monomospat. Who said I plan to quick murder? Hey no I plan to torture all of you. But FIRST. Midoriya pressed another button on the remote he had. Suddenly screams could be heard everywhere as everyone besides Class A and Monoma were killed with those ropes. They had cut through them, leaving them in pieces. Blood practically flooded the area. The smell of blood filled the air maker Midoriya laugh menacingly, the rest of Class 1 is stared horrified. With no heroes to help besides the teachers they were all doomed. Now that that's done. 
Let's get this show on the road. Midoriya said as he flew down to the class. In his hand he was holding some needle. He walked up to them all and injected them with said needle. Then he got them all next to each other and teleported all of them to his secret base. Then he lifted the security he bought. All Might was also taken hostage. In fact, he was taken hostage from the very start. Quick we have to go to UA, he might attack now. Sir Knight I shouted. I'll fly there and subdue him, Hawks replied. Hawks zoomed to UA, nothing had happened from the outside, but it was eerily silent, odd for a festival. He flew over where the festival was held and gasped. Blood and human parts everywhere. Midoriya had already struck. How did the kid manage to kill everyone in such a short time frame? Is there another power he held off on using Hawks thought to himself? Night I, Ryuku, and the other heroes pulled up to the situation, and all collectively gasped. All Might, Class 1A, and Monoma were all missing. Teachers were nowhere to be found, and everyone was dead. I knew the kid was strong, but I never suspected for him to be this strong. How did he manage to kill over 400 students in such a short time period? Sir Night I spat. This is an unforgivable act of villainy, we have to find him at once Fakum hissed. He was boiling with rage. Mirio, Iri, Nijer, and Tamaki were also still alive. They were locked inside the building. Midoriya isn't here, neither is Class 1A. Where did he take them? Sir Knight I questioned as they unbarricaded Azawa from his own dorm room. A note was found on the sofa written by Midoriya himself, he really planned this out. Hello, heroes. I guess you all finally figured it out, yes. I, Izuku Midoriya, am a villain. You all had no idea. I was the one behind the kidnappings, I was the one who killed everyone in UA. This is all for my revenge. You all deserve this. You all just stood by, watched me get ridiculed by the class. Watch my isolation. But what did you do? Nothing. Azawa, I know you're quite confused as to why your room is barricaded. Well, I didn't want you to see everyone die. Oh how much this must sting for all of you, but I don't care. I've gone through this my entire life, it's time you all get a taste of what I was dealing with. Good luck finding me, I doubt you can. After all, this is where I took all those victims here. Bye. Azawa was reading the note. I didn't think the kid had it in him. Even after I did my investigation on him during the internship. He showed no signs. What a sneaky little crap Hawks hissed. Azawa was hurt. He didn't expect Midoriya to do this, he didn't expect Midoriya to betray them. We have to find the class ASAP. We don't know what he could be doing, considering he already killed the school, Hawks shouted as he opened the doors and prepared to fly. Is there any way we can track him down? Sir Knight I asked Azawa. No, we didn't put any tracker on him he sighed. That's not good. With Midoriya. Midoriya left everyone in their respected rooms. He had a plan in mind. He kept some important doors locked, like his bedroom door and the exit room. Inside these rooms were paper, a random object, and a locked box. The paper had instructions on how to play this twisted game Midoriya had made. He also had punishments for those who make a mistake. It was a chance game if anything. Midoriya had attached speakers and cameras everywhere around the labyrinth. He was going to use it to monitor everyone. Where am I? What's going on? The Kugu thought to himself as he looked around. He was in a beige carpeted room, next to him was the stuff Midoriya left set up. He read the note left for him. Hi, Kakin. Well as you can see this is my revenge for everything you and the class have ever done to me. You have 20 minutes starting from when you wake up to figure out how to get out of this room with everything given to you and make it to the next room. If you don't make it out then. Ha. Huh? Anyways, inside the box beside you is a key to open the door to your left. The random object you have is the only clue you have to figuring out where to find the key to open the box with the key. As you can see your cork won't work, those bracelets won't allow it. I'm watching. Better break free or else is what the note read. Stupid Deku. He wants to play. Ha, I'll play this stupid game and kill him after Bakugo thought to himself as he looked at the random object he had. It was a picture. A picture of a blood bag. How is this a clue? Bakugo thought to himself as he forced himself up. There was nothing other than that picture. He looked around the room some more. Besides him was a couch, in front of him was a mini fridge, diagonal from him was a lamp, and to the other side of him was a drawer. On the drawer sat a timer. 1734. 1733. 1732. It was counting down. A blood bag. Doesn't he store these things in the fridge? The Kugu thought to himself as he ran up to the fridge. Inside there was nothing. It was empty. What? The Kugu panicked as he ran to the drawer and opened it up. He found a small knife, it wouldn't be useful yet. Dot. He grabbed it and stuffed it into his pocket. This won't help me open the box, but it'll be useful when I see that dang Deku Bakugo thought to himself. 
He looked around the room like an insane person, but he found nothing. He went through the drawers, checked under the stand, looked inside the fridge, inside the lamp head, under the couch, and he still couldn't find anything, and he was running out of time. 557. 556. 555. Where didn't I check yet? Think idiot think. The cuckoo thought to himself as sweat ran down his back. He knew what Midoriya was capable of when no one was holding him back. Inside the couch he sprang to the couch and threw the seats off. The blood bag was found. How is this going to open the box? The Kugo internally screamed as he grabbed the bag. Suddenly he felt something hard within the blood. He had two minutes left. That's what the knife is for. He thought to himself as he pulled out the knife and cut through the bag. There he found a bloody key. He quickly stuck it in the box and pulled out the key. Then he ran to the door and unlocked it. You did the first step catching. But I don't think you'll be able to figure this one out, Midoriya chuckled through the speakers. You dang psychopath. Once I get through all these rooms I'll personally kill you, the Kugo shouted. As if you haven't already killed me, Midoriya laughed. A bead of sweat rolled down the Kugo's face upon hearing the malice in Midoriya's face. This time there was no note. Just another picture. This room was purple, quite the contrast to the beige room he was originally in. The door to the previous room shut and locked. He was stuck now. This time the picture was of a phone. Instead of 20 minutes this time he had 10 minutes. He ran through the room, just looking for the phone. He went through everything there but. He couldn't find it. Time was up. Kakin, Kakin, Kakin. You're out of TIME. Ready for your first punishment. Midoriya giggled. The Kugo internally panicked as he tried to forcefully open the box, but to no avail it was locked. Midoriya loaded up a syringe with poison. This poison wouldn't kill, but it would put the Kugo through excruciating pain, leaving him vomiting blood. Midoriya teleported to Bakugo's room, a psychotic grin plastered on his face. Step back you psycho. Bakugo screamed as he tried to punch Midoriya. Midoriya dodged and kicked his stomach. Without a quirk your attacks are useless against me. After all, I got into UA without one Midoriya laughed as he stabbed Bakugo with the poison filled needle. After that he teleported away to give everyone else their punishments. They too have failed. They all got the poison treatment, but it would progressively get worse with everything they mess up. It's only day one my blood bags, prepare for tomorrow, Midoriya chuckled through the microphone as he left. He had an idea in mind, just to tease the heroes. He melted into Bakugo as he teleported into a random alleyway. He walked around, acting casual. That was until Hawks and the other heroes spotted him. Bakugo where's your class? As always shouted. Midoriya chuckled as he ran away, still shapeshifted into Bakugo. After him. They all collectively said. Midoriya ran up to a roof and stood next to the edge. Hawks and Azawa were the only ones there. You're cornered now. Bakugo, come on what's wrong, Azawa hissed. Midoriya began to laugh sadistically as he melted back into his original self. You're all so gullible it's hilarious be said. Midoriya Hawks and Azawa said in unison. In the flesh. Azawa immediately activated his quirk and charged at Midoriya. Midoriya dodged and kicked Azawa's stomach. You all forget that I got into UA using my own strength alone. Being quirkless is only my strength, Midoriya laughed as he dodged hits left and right. Azawa blinked. Midoriya ran back to the edge of the 10-story building, hundreds of feet off the ground as the sun set behind him. You're still cornered. Hawk spat as he went at Midoriya. Midoriya smiled one last time before falling backwards and descending into a free fall. Faster than Hawks could fly. Midoriya descended through the sky, the sun glimmering in his eyes as it set. Hawks was flying after him, but it was no use, gravity was pulling him down fast. Midoriya stretched out his arms and turned to face the ground. He had an idea. As the street floor approached closer and closer to Midoriya, he couldn't help but wear a smile as he watched Hawks desperately try to grab him. The wind ruffled through his hair, making it even fluffier than it was before. Midoriya knew he couldn't die, even if he didn't pull off what he had in mind all he'd experience is some pain before reforming and running. It was a thrill. Just as Midoriya was 10 feet away from the ground he quickly swung his arms to the side and activated his flight. Quickly changing his trajectory and flying above the ground. Ox had to pause himself in flight to avoid hitting the ground himself. Midoriya stuck his tongue out and flew off dodging cars and dipping into an alleyway. Dang it. Hawk spat as he flew back up to Izawa. Did you get him Izawa asked, recovering from the hit Midoriya delivered. No, he got away Hawks hiss. Izawa bit his lip in frustration as he looked at Hawks. The sun finally set, completely. It was the beginning of the night. The beginning of chaos. Midoriya's red eyes illuminated in the darkness of the alleyway he sat in. I need to get some random victims. 
They'll be helpful when I torture the class, Midoriya thought to himself as he began to shapeshift into a stranger. He walked out of the alleyway and began the hunt. A bunch of police ran right by him, they were looking for him. Midoriya held back a chuckle as he overhead them say, check the alleyways. That's where Izuku Midoriya usually kidnaps people. He then saw a bunch of heroes follow with them, including Izawa. Once the coast was clear he continued to walk away. Still hunting for a couple victims. He'd need at least 20, considering that's the amount of people he has in his class plus Manama. Midoriya crossed the street and walked into another alleyway. There he found a group of friends. Hey could you all help me? Midoriya asked. Still in disguise. Um, who even are you, a hobo? Get lost you scumbag one of them said. Wrong answer. Midoriya melted back into his normal self, revealing his crimson red eyes, pearly white fangs, and his black suit. The group gasped as they tried to run off, immediately recognizing Midoriya from the news. Midoriya sped up to the mall and knocked them all out. He then piled them together and teleported them to his base. He then shapeshifted into another person and continued to kidnap people left and right. Eventually he reached his 20-person goal and returned to his base. He then looked at the cameras. The Kugo was punching the ground in pain, the poison had kicked in. Most of the girls were crying and screaming in pain, most of the guys were holding back their tears while punching something in the room. Midoriya laughed, this was only their beginning. Midoriya had put the kidnapped victims in an extra room. He tied them up and kept them knocked out with a drug. Midoriya decided he'd continue to torture the class tomorrow. For now he wanted to toy with the heroes. He pulled out his phone and figured out the location of where they were investigating. After that he shapeshifted into Todoroki and teleported there. He walked down the street casually, surprisingly not getting much attention. That was until an officer glanced at him, looked away, and looked right back at him confused. Todoroki, he said. Midoriya looked at him like Todoroki would and shrugged his shoulders, continuing to walk as if nothing happened. That's Midoriya he has a shapeshifting ability. Azawa shouted as he activated his quirk. Midoriya melted back to normal and turned around. Whoops, he chuckled. Bit him they all screamed. Midoriya laughed as he went speed running through the streets of the night. He had everything memorized, he knew where to go and where he'd end up. He memorized the layout of Tokyo. As they all chased him Midoriya came up with a plan. He quickly turned an alleyway, getting them all to split up, he then jumped up into the roof of the buildings he was in between. Having to jump wall to wall to get up, he watched the police search in confusion as they no longer saw Midoriya. But that didn't stop Hawks. He was right there, on the roof as well. Sup Hawks, Midoriya said as he stretched. Why are you doing this? Didn't you say you wanted to be a hero? I thought you weren't out for revenge Hawks bat. Well Hawks. If you knew even half of what I had to go through you'd understand why. You don't know the full story. Midoriya replied. It doesn't make sense, at the internships. You acted genuine. Hawks hissed. Oh that. I knew you were investigating me. Everything you saw was an act, I out-analyzed you. I've been planning this since I came back from my death, Midoriya chuckled. Why? Hawks shouted, full of rage as he sprinted at Midoriya. A sharp grin made its way to Midoriya as he prepared to fight. Hawks pulled out two of his feathers and ran at Midoriya, holding them like swords. Midoriya's quirk was still cancelled, which meant Azawa was still watching, but not too close. Hawks tried to strike Midoriya, but Midoriya dodged and punched his stomach. Hawks recovered and tried to slash Midoriya again, but Midoriya kicked his hand, sending his feather flying off. He grabbed the feather and used it against Hawks when he tried to strike him with his other feather. Azawa was close to blinking. I trusted you, do you really believe you are the only one struggling to be able to commit such an outrageous murder? Hawks shouted as he tried to slash Midoriya. Midoriya was blocking with his feather. Well you shouldn't have. If you knew anything then you would have known that I would have to kill to survive anyways. Midoriya spat. What do you mean? The skull gave you blood bags. Hawks yelled. Yeah but my body could hardly survive on them. If I have to kill to survive, then I'm going to get my revenge along with it. Midoriya screamed, hitting Hawks' hand. He sent his other feather flying, leaving Hawks weaponless. Azawa blinked. I got into you a without a quirk. My combat skills are much greater than yours, Midoriya hissed as he held the sharp feather to Hawk's face. Put your hands up, an army of police shouted behind Midoriya holding guns up at him. Go ahead and shoot. I can't die, Midoriya chuckled as he swiftly moved behind Hawks holding the sword of a feather to his neck. But he sure can he added. You can't die. Hawks muttered to himself. That's why he was able to send himself into that free fall earlier. Dot. Midoriya. My disappointment is immeasurable. This isn't you, the Midoriya I knew wouldn't dare to kill anyone, Azawa said as he stood in front of all the police. You don't know the real me. 
Only I do. The version you saw was merely an act, a deception. If you knew the real me then you would have known I've been plotting this little scheme since I got back. You would have known I was selling bodies on the black market for weeks, Midoriya snapped. So that's what you did to the victims' bodies, as Awa mumbled. Why are you doing this? I understand that class hurt you, but the skull didn't deserve death. Those innocent people you killed and sold didn't deserve death. Pain in Izawa's voice was prevalent. It wasn't only the class. The entire school hurt me. Every day during lunch. You all just stood by and watched. Those innocents were only needed for my survival. If I didn't kill them then someone else would have died. Midoriya screamed. What do you mean? The school is providing you with blood bags, as always spat. During camp I discovered I can't sleep until I get fresh blood. If I don't get fresh blood every day then I go crazy. You've been killing innocents since camp is always screamed. You shouldn't be shocked. I'm a villain, cold-hearted and always will be. What about Eerie? Why did you save her? As always spat. Eerie doesn't deserve to go through what I went through. She's only a kid. But you all, the school, the class. They deserve it Midoriya hissed, bringing the feather sword closer to Hawk's neck. Calm do Zawa was cut off. Don't tell me to calm down. Before I died you just stood by and watched like everyone else. You watched my suffering and did nothing. When I got kidnapped by the League, All Might didn't even want to save me. I was working with them at the time, I heard everything. The only reason I didn't take you with the class was because at least you changed after I died. They remained the same. Making me feel worthless, destroying my will to live. It didn't help that I didn't have any home support. Midoriya spat, his voice obviously in pain. He was holding back angry tears. Look we can talk this out. I turned to class let go of Hawks, and the punishment will be less severe, as always said, trying to come to an agreement. There is no talking me out of this. I had planned this moment for months. I thought long and hard about it, I work for this, there isn't anything stopping me. I just Midoriya lowered the ass and fell to the ground crying. Hawks and the others were surprised the cold-hearted villain was showing emotions. None of you understand. None of you do. None of you went through the same pain. None of you were broken down like me. None of you felt what it's like to be unwanted. None of you felt what it's like to be hurt every day of your life. Just hoping it would stop. None of you went through my life. Midoriya shouted. Hawks kneeled down to his side and tried to pat his back. Look kid, we all Hawks was cut off when a strong force jolted him in his stomach and sent him flying back and almost off the edge of the building. Rule number one. Don't trust a villain Midoriya chuckled standing back up wiping the tears off his face. Another act is all were hissed. Hawk's stomach was bleeding. Midoriya had cut him using his claws. Not an act, if anything all of what I said was true. The only thing that wasn't true were my tears. Midoriya laughed as he licked the blood off his fingers. A chelp hawk said his blood began to drain from his stomach. Well, until next time heroes. This definitely won't be the last time we meet, Midoriya laughed as he began to float up. Don't let him get away. They shouted. Azawa held his arm out. Hox is injured, not to mention Midoriya is holding back right now. If he wanted to he could kill us all right now like he did with the students at UA he said. Precisely. Now bye bye. Midoriya chirped, teleporting away. Hawks are you okay Zawa shouted, running to Hawks side. Call. An ambulance he said as he passed out. Hawks was immediately rushed to the hospital to get him treated, he had lost so much blood already. Just how sharp were Midoriya's claws. Midoriya made his way back to his base. He pulled out a blood bag and drained it of all its content, as he heard screams come from the class through the speakers. Everything was going just so perfectly. But there was more to come. This was only the beginning for Midoriya. No, he had a whole plan to torture the class. As Midoriya prepared things to use for tomorrow his phone suddenly went off. He picked it up and read it, it was from Shigaraki. Where are you? You aren't betraying the League are you? He asked. Right, I didn't tell you. I have a secret base where I'm keeping everyone. No I'm not betraying the League, I was going to drop by tonight. Besides you wouldn't want the police to crash at your place again, Midori replied. Right then. I'll see you later. Midoriya then went back to preparing everything as he watched the news in the background. Izuku Midoriya, a former UA student leaves Pro Hero Hawks hospitalized in an incident earlier today. He is keeping class 1 a hostage and has killed almost everyone in UA alone. If you see this teen do not approach him. Call the police and run away. He is regarded as a high threat, his quirk allowing him to shapeshift into other people, making it difficult to find him. But he's distinguishable even while shapeshifted. If you see anyone with cat-like pupils, one red left eye, and claw-like hands run away. Police have found out that every time he shapeshifts those are the only things he can't change. Hawks is expected to make a full recovery. A news reporter said. 
So they figured that much out about my shape-shifting Midoriya's side. Make it stop please Kirishima cried. If the poison keeps hurting them, hurting them myself would be pointless and wouldn't add to the fun. Midoriya thought to himself as he walked over to the antidote cabinet. He filled a syringe up with the antidote and injected it into everyone. They well rested, this was only the appetizer. We hardly even reached the fun. Midoriya laughed through the speakers. A look of fear ran across all of their faces. If that was only the beginning then what did he actually have in mind? That kid sure knows where to hit Hawks forced out. His stomach was stitched up, but it would leave a scar. The giant slit mark running from his lower right trip to his lower left kidney. I didn't even know he could do that with his hands alone, as Awa muttered. What are we going to do? If the kid was able to put Hawks in a state like this then how do we take him out? Fagum asked. As always sighed as he recalled upon information. Midoriya's only weakness is sunlight but. He has a bracelet that blocks it from hurting him. Is there a way we can track this bracelet? Ryukyu asked. Not that I know of. We could have asked Mei, the support course student, but she's dead too. As Awa replied. We have to rescue the class. From what Midoriya was describing earlier he doesn't plan to kill them. He's going to torture them, Hulk said. Azawa and the other heroes bit their lips in frustration. They had no leads on Midoriya not to mention now they had to hurry to save their students. The next day, all of class one is sad in horror. Not only were they starving, but they didn't know what Midoriya had in store for them. For all they know they think Midoriya is trying to kill them. Though he has something worse than death prepared for them. Good morning my torture victims. Today is a brand new day which means new pain for all of you. I hope you're prepared for the assortments I have ready for you all. Instead of a puzzle room you have to unlock I have something different today. Today you'll be solving riddles. If you don't since then then. You'll just find out what happens Midoriya laughed. He had put all the riddles in their rooms as they were asleep during the night. He didn't feel like doing it while they were awake. You all have two tries to solve the riddles. Good luck he added. Akugo picked up his paper and read it to himself as did the rest of the class. I'm with you during your bright hours but disappear within your dark period. Akugo read to himself. Does he think I'm some idiot? It's a shadow Bakugo grabbed the pencil and aggressively wrote it down. I got the answer you dumb Deku Bakugo spat. Well what is it? A shadow. That would be the logical answer, but no. Try again Midoriya laughed. What? No way I'm wrong. Bakugo thought to himself as he reread the riddle. One try remaining Midoriya laughed. Kirishima held up his paper to the camera. Wrong, Midoriya said. Kirishima raised it and wrote something else. Wrong A.G.A.I.N. You're out of tries. Punishment time. Midoriya jumped up. He walked up to one of the torture weapons and teleported to Kirishima's room. Kirishima scooted into the corner of the room, fear shooting through his body. Midoriya held a tool, it looked like the tool people used to cut down trees' branches, but much denser and sharper. Kirishima tried to turn on his quirk, but it was no use. The quirk cancelling cuffs left him defenseless. Midoriya held the snipper to Kirishima's leg, his calf more specifically. And cut through it. Kirishima screamed in pain as his muscle now sat split and bleeding profusely. Midoriya didn't cut off his leg, he just snipped through the muscle. Kirishima squirmed in agony as he cupped his snipped muscle. You monster. I hate you. Kirishima cried out. We hardly got started, Midoriya laughed as he snipped the already snipped muscle. Kirishima screamed, everyone else was able to hear it. Shivers going down their spine as they heard more and more screaming every time Midoriya laughed. Now that's enough for today. Midoriya chirped. He left Kirishima mutilated. Both of his calves cut up into multiple sections, his hand also being cut up. Blood pulled beneath Kirishima, not enough to kill him though. That was very enjoyable. I bet you had just as much fun as I did. Now it's time everyone else gets punished, Midoriya cheered as he wiped the bloody snipper. Tears slipped down Kirishima's face as he had no energy left to muster to yell at Midoriya. Pain pulsed through his body, that's all he could feel at the moment. A sadistic grin made its way to Midoriya's face as he teleported away to go give everyone else their punishments. Bakugo was sweating nervously, he didn't know what to respond with, and from how Kirishima was screaming, he didn't want to find out what would happen if he got it wrong. Bakugo took a guess and gulped. Is it? Fake friends? He asked. A dissatisfied look made its way to Midoriya's face. Ugh yeah. I guess you avoid punishment for now Midoriya sighed. The Kugo let out a large exhale, gasping for breath. He hasn't realized he was holding his own breath. Midoriya had so far punished. Kaminari. Kirishima. Mineta. Mina. Hagakur. Ajur. Aoyama. Sato. And. Siro. Everyone else had gotten their riddle right. The punishment they all received was the same as Kirishima's. 
leg snipping. Well, I can't have you all dying on me so here's some food. If you all die then where's the fun in that, Midoriya said as he cut small rations of food. He teleported to all of them and gave them their small portion. It was a small piece of chicken and a cup of water. Enough to keep them alive, but not enough to satisfy their hunger. For those who manage to solve my riddles you'll be spared a punishment today. But remember. Every day gets progressively harder. No hero can find you here, not where we are. We're in a whole nother city in a whole nother forest in an abandoned bunker that is invisible from the outside. The crime rate in this city is so high due to the fact the heroes that roam this area aren't strong at all. You're all doomed mid or you laugh through the speakers. Despair filled their hearts, and they lost hope of ever seeing the outside world again. Now rest up. Punishing you all when you're already in pain isn't fun at all. That's WHY. I'm going to make you all suffer for at least 5 more hours before I come down into your rooms and inject you with a healer, Midoriya said. Groans were able to be heard from the rooms of the tortured, only making Midoriya smile some more. This is everything he's ever wanted to do. Be a power against those who've wronged him. Deku's gone completely insane, this isn't the same Deku from before he died. If only I hadn't killed him. Then he wouldn't be at such a high power to be able to do this. If only Bakugo thought to himself as he finished his ration of food. Do we have any leads on Midoriya? Azawa asked. I've only managed to figure out the general location of where he's staying according to the bracelet he's wearing. He's in a forest in a completely different city, but the problem is I can't directly pinpoint him due to how far he is not to mention how dense that forest is, Nezu replied. That's fine, we'll send everyone there. He wouldn't be able to stay hidden for too long, as always said in a serious tone. Alright then. Mission find class 1 and rescue them from Midoriya's claws has started. The next day. Midoriya had injected the tortured victims with a serum that numbs already injured limbs. The issue with this serum is that it doesn't numb fresh wounds. So even if they had this serum within them, if Midoriya decided to hurt them again they'd feel it. As Midoriya gave them their new riddles the heroes made their way through the forest they were in. Trying to find Midoriya. Kakin you got a WRONG. You know what that means, Midoriya laughed as he lifted Bakugo up by the collar of his shirt. Midoriya teleported the both of them to a room full of mirrors. There were no doors at all, just mirrors. Midoriya stood there for a bit, then teleported away. When he came back he had someone quite special. All Might. Don't you dare lay a hand on All Might, you hear me Deku Bakugo screamed as he charged at Midoriya. Midoriya chuckled and jumped into the mirror with All Might in his clutches. Dang it. Bakugo screamed as he pounded on the mirrors. Midoriya's reflection was found in all the other mirrors of the room. A fangy grin made its way to Midoriya's face as he pulled out a special knife. Feast your eyes Kakin. Today you'll personally witness the death of. All Might Midoriya said as he twirled the knife in his hand. No. Bakugo screamed. Midoriya chuckled as he stabbed All Might's legs to start off the torture. All Might screamed in pain as Midoriya removed the knife and stabbed him again. All Might was completely defenseless. Having chains everywhere makes it hard to move. Midoriya laughed as he dragged the knife through his skin from his ankle all the way up to his knees, decorating All Might in skin slits. After that Midoriya stabbed his shoulders and dragged even harder down, slicing up his arms. Bakugo screamed in anger as he tried to stop Midoriya, but it was impossible. All Might grimaced in pain, he had to energy to scream. Death's solemn tears sliding down his tan face as he stood there waiting for his demise. Midoriya reached into his pocket and pulled out another needle. He injected it into All Might. It was the same poison he injected the class with, the one that causes excruciating pain without death. So as All Might suffered internally Midoriya made it worse externally. Midoriya had mutilated All Might's body. Skin draped down like curtains on All Might's legs and arms. Blood everywhere. The Kugo was stunned. He was there but couldn't do anything. He was just watching as his mentor died in the hands of someone he deemed weak. Now for some finishing touches, Midoriya chirped as he brought the knife to All Might's face. He carved the word useless into All Might's forehead before carving Deku into his cheek. Midoriya hated the word Deku, it was a word Bakugo and the others always used to torment him. That's why he carved it on All Might's face. To represent himself. Midoriya went on for over an hour just slicing and dicing up All Might in many ways. Carving more and more words into All Might, on his back, stomach, arm, leg, etc. And now came the moment he's been waiting for ever since he came back. Now that you've suffered somewhat enough it's time I deliver the finishing touch, Midoriya said, looking over at Bakugo who looked like he was about to explode any minute now. Midoriya brought the knife up to All Might's neck and chuckled. Say goodbye to All Might, Kakin Midoriya said as he slid All Might's throat, blood splattering on his pristine suit. Bakugo screamed in a burning fury, Nuuuu. It was so loud everyone could hear it, even the people. Outside. 
Did you guys hear that? It sounded like Bakugo. As always shouted. Yeah, I heard it, but it sounded so far away. Is it possible they're underground? Hulk said. It's possible. We need to hurry as always spat. Now now Kakin. It's only All Might that died. No one special Midoriya laughed. Why you monster? Do you have any idea of what you're doing to us? Bakugo screamed. I have a perfect idea of what I'm doing to all of you. I'm torturing you all. What about it? Midoriya chuckled. You? You psychopath. Bakugo was just hurling any insult he could muster at this point. And? I've acknowledged the fact I was a psychopath since I died. This information isn't new to me. What reaction did you what with that? Midoriya sneered as he tossed All Might's lifeless body to the ground. I will kill you. Just you wait Deku Bakugo spat. I'd like to see you try. Considering the fact I'm impossible to kill you know Midoriya snickered. Bakugo tried to break the mirror, but it was no use. It was too dense. Midoriya stepped out of the mirror, dragging All Might's body with him. Here's your pathetic sensei Midoriya said throwing the body into Bakugo. Bakugo fell back, All Might's corpse in his hands. I found it it looks like a bunker. Mirio shouted. Great job Mirio. But can you open it, Sir Knight I replied. No sir, it's locked. But I can phase through it. Mirio offered. No. We don't know what Midoriya is capable of. Considering this is his domain he'd outwit you here. You could die. Wait till we figure out how to open it, as always said. More screams from the class could be heard as Midoriya went to torture them all individually using the victims he collected the night before. Torturing the victims in front of them while stabbing them at the same time. At this point, no one had escaped Midoriya's vengeance. We have to hurry, I can heart the class's screams. Hawks shouted as he tried to forcefully pull up the locked bunker. Here let me do it. My quirk will allow me to bream through almost anything Ryuku offered. Everyone stepped back as she transformed into a dragon and proceeded to hold the handle opening and force it up. She would have just smashed through the ground, but she didn't want to risk hurting a student. They found me Midoriya thought to himself as he quickly teleported to his room and grabbed his bag. This bag had everything Midoriya ever needed, it was his backup plan in case anything were to go wrong. It had his phone, extra clothes, blood bags, weapons, etc. We're in. They all shouted. They all stormed in and looked around. So many doors. And they're all locked Hawks said. Did Midoriya build this? Tamaki asked, confused. No, this is an abandoned bunker. There's a chance Midoriya stumbled across it some time back. As Awa replied. If anyone's in here scream Fagum shouted. Everyone began to look around. They found cabinets of weapons, and a cabinet labeled poison with nothing in it. Midoriya had took all of it. Help. I am here. Please help. Shouts from all around. Every pro hero took a door and stormed in with three other heroes and police. They then began to go through every room of the labyrinth, finding everyone in the class, as well as some kidnapped victims' corpses. The class looked horrible, cut up muscle tissue and skin draped around as they took them up back onto land. As Awa grimaced at the sight. They had gotten everyone. Except. Kitsuki Bakugo. All they found was a note. You may have taken the rest of the class, but I'm not done with Kakin here. He made me suffer the most. Good luck finding him. This time it'll be impossible. But, I'll always be with you. There's a gift in the room to your right Midoriya had written. Dangadazawa shouted in anger as he walked towards the next room. When he walked in all he saw was a bunch of mirrors with Midoriya's reflection in it, holding Bakugo and All Might's mutilated corpse. Midoriya Azawa shouted full of anger. Midoriya took Bakugo and walked away with him into the mirror drum. Impossible for them to get to him now. All Might. Night I yelled, his voice in despair. No pulse, as always sighed as a tear slid down his face. He picked up All Might's corpse and lead him outside where ambulances were taking the class to the hospital. After the raid and everyone was taken to get healed. They were in horrid condition, with only Bakugo missing. I should have activated my quirk then Midoriya wouldn't have been able to stay in the mirror. Then we could have arrested him and taken Bakugo back. Now we have an even bigger problem, we can't get to them if they're in a mirror as Awa thought to himself. In total. Hiroshima had severely injured both of his calves his ligaments, tendons, biceps, back, and stomach. All having been cut up in some psychotic way. Kaminari had bruises everywhere, he was littered in them, broken bones, a busted lip, three broken ribs, a twisted leg, a broken arm, and electric burns. Mina had acid burns everywhere, the acid used on her had a much higher toxicity compared to hers. Yuraka's damage was all internal. Ida had his engines ripped out of his legs, but they were able to be fixed. Shoji had one of his arms cut off leaving him only with five arms. Ajur had a mutilated tail, arms, and legs. No injuries were visible on Hagakur, but she definitely got them. Mineta was on the brink of death. 
Aoyama had a cut up stomach, skin hanging all over. Momo had broken most of her bones except for her back and hip. Sato had all his muscles and ligaments cut through. Todoroki had too, been cut and bruised up everywhere. Siro had his tape dispensers clogged up and broken, as well as his legs being broken as well, with bruises littering his back. Asui had a busted lip nose, both of her eyes bruised, five broken ribs, a punctured lung, and a twisted leg. Yuri's stomach was stabbed multiple times, she had slit legs, and also had bruises everywhere. Koda's vocal cords were cut up from the inside, he was forced to drink acid. And finally, Tokoyami had a chipped beak, a twisted knee, stab wounds everywhere, and a failing kidney. Bakugo had unknown injuries, the hospital didn't know. He wasn't there. As always stood there mortified at what Midoriya did, he knew Midoriya had killed before, but that wasn't as bad as the torture be out the class through. I understand the class bullied him, but this is too far. He's insane. Gone off the hook. He knows what he did to Bakugo, if he did this to the class. I could only imagine what he did to Bakugo. As Awa thought to himself as he looked over at his students. They were all being urgently cared for as they had lost a lot of blood, and hardly had enough food or water in their systems. All Might was deceased. And? Midoriya was still on the loose with Bakugo. Smile for me Kakin. Smile for me, Kakin Midoriya said as he carved in the word smile into his back with his claws. Bakugo screamed in pain as he tried to get himself to move, but he couldn't. He was chained down to a chair in some dark room. Hardly being able to see, just feeling Midoriya's claw dig into his back and rip off chunks of flesh. And dumb Midoriya chirped. Where did you take me? Bakugo screamed. Well, I dragged you through a mirror, but that's not where we currently are. We're at the league's base. Midoriya replied. It took up lots of Midoriya's energy to stay within the mirror, especially when keeping someone else there. Not to mention he can't travel too far in the mirrors, since he can only travel through places the mirror is pointed at. Midoriya had made it seem like he took him through the mirror realm, so that Azawa wouldn't be able to get to him too fast. Once Azawa dragged All Might out he teleported himself and Bakugo to the League's base. Bakugo nervously sweat upon hearing that. He knew Midoriya's torture was painful, but what could the League do? I'll be back eventually. Hope you enjoy bleeding out, Midoriya said as he walked off. Oh yeah and. My claws were laced with poison. Good luck. Midoriya walked out of the dark room and to the league's main sitting area. That's where he walked up to the tech guy of the league. How's the hacking coming along? Midoriya asked. I'm almost through the mainframe of all the broadcasting systems in all of Japan. But why exactly do you want to do this? He asked. The truth has to come out. They all need to know what UA did to me, Midoriya replied. And? Riot and I want to torture Kakin in front of them all Midoriya chuckled. Whatever you say he said as he went back to work. Midoriya walked to the fridge and pulled out a blood bag, he was hungry after all of what he did. Screams of pain could be heard from Bakugo as the poison kicked in. He was jolting up and down in his chair, chains rattling with every movement. It was annoying everyone else. Manuel that kid shut up Dobby hissed. Honestly for real, he's getting annoying Toga added. If you two want to you can go stab him or something. Just don't kill him, Midoriya said as he finished off his blood bag. Excitement lit up in Toga's eyes, and she joyfully grabbed her knife, and ran to the room Bakugo was held captive in. Dabi too, wanted to torture Bakugo. Shortly the smell of burning flesh became prevalent as the blood-curdling screams of Bakugo only became louder and louder. Everyone was stitched and healed up best to the doctor's abilities, but they were still in an unstable condition. They were allowed to go back to UA though, but it was hardly a school anymore. With almost all the students dead they didn't know what was going to happen. Most of them couldn't walk, their muscles were fixed as were their bones, but they weren't stable enough to walk on. They were in such a fragile state that just walking on them could open a stitch and break a bone. So most of the class sat in the main room, due to the fact that they couldn't go upstairs. They didn't have an elevator. The heroes were stressing on how to find Bakugo, especially after seeing how mutilated everyone was. It was like a shock to them. They didn't even want to imagine what happened to Bakugo. Most of them grimaced at the thought of it. As most of them sat there not in as much pain as earlier, Bakugo was getting the worst pain he's ever gotten in his life. Heroes worked diligently, trying to find Midoriya. In the main room of the dorms there was one mirror. Midoriya quickly teleported into the mirror. Hello my beloved classmates, Midoriya chirped. Azawa wasn't in the room at the time. All of them gasped and turned around just to see Midoriya in the mirror. Where's Bakugo Kaminari shouted. You'll all be seeing him very, very soon. Midoriya chuckled. What do you mean by that? Momo spat. You'll find out eventually. Anyways, where's Azawa? Midoriya asked. Wouldn't you like to know Siro hissed. Just shut up and tell me Midoriya spat, his bears peeking out. 
The bare malice present in his voice was enough to make shivers run down their spines. No, they all said. I guess you all forgot what I did to you all. Care to go through another round? Midoriya grinned. Their hearts pounded out of their chest upon that sentence. It brought back memories just from the other day. What's going on? Azawa asked as he walked in. Hey sensei Midoriya cheered through the mirror. Midoriya, where's Bakugo? He screamed. Why is it the first thing you all ask? He's hardly even important Midoriya hissed. Give me my student back. Azawa spat activating his quirk. Due to the fact Midoriya was in the mirror, his quirk simply bounced off. It didn't work. Azawa stood there, feeling defeated. Was I not your student too? Midoriya asked. Azawa's heart pinged in pain upon Midoriya's words. He didn't want to accept that Midoriya really committed all those crimes. It just didn't fit the image he had of him. Suddenly Fluffy went running up to the mirror, meowing at the mirror. She had missed Midoriya a lot. Fluffy get away from him. He's a villain Azawa hissed. She scratched at the mirror, just trying to get to Midoriya. This will be mine now Midoriya said, opening up the mirror allowing the cat to fall in. You won't take her too. Azawa screeched running up to Fluffy, but it was too late for that too. Fluffy jumped into Midoriya's arms and purred soundly. Azawa banged at the mirror, trying to get to Midoriya, but it was far too late. Anyways. You'll all be getting a special appearance soon. I'd recommend watching TV. By e Midoriya cheered, teleporting away with the cat. What does he mean by that? Kaminari asked. Who knows? But I say we should watch. Maybe we'll be able to figure out where Bakugo is Kirishima said. With Midoriya. I've gotten through. We can now broadcast through all of Japan he said. Really? Midoriya cheered as he let the cat roam around the base. Yup. Now all we have to do is set up all the cameras and prepare he replied. That's great. Let's get this show in the road Midoriya chirped. They then spent the next hour and a half preparing cameras, lighting, torture weapons, poison, microphones, and everything needed for what Midoriya had in store. We'll air at 5 p.m., Midoriya said. It was only 1 p.m., so they had quite some waiting time. Why so late? Shigaraki asked. Cause that's when most people will be home or at least be using some form of device, Midoriya replied. And so they waited another four hours. The Kugo just sat there in pain. He had lost all hopes of ever being free. Soon it was time. Time for broadcasting. They turned on the camera, it was facing Midoriya and Bakugo, the room was brightly lit. 3.2.1. Star E said. With the push of a button now all of Japan's broadcasting systems were hijacked, and now Midoriya was able to broadcast anything he wanted. Hello Japan, Midoriya said as he walked around Bakugo. That's what he meant Kirishima yelled out. Bakugo was there. On TV. Shirtless littered with cuts, bruises burns, and knife puncture wounds. They all gasped at the sight. The Kugo's crimson eyes were all evaded of hope, only a red void of emptiness. Now I bet you all wonder. What am I doing? Will you see Japan? This teen right here made me live my entire life in pain. You're all here today to witness me getting back at him, Midoriya chuckled. I feel like some of you are wondering what he did for me to do such things. Why I became a villain despite going to UA and striving to be a hero most of my life. I wonder. Do you all remember the incident from five months ago? It was my death day. Wanna know how I died? Yue paid quite a lot of money to keep it under wraps. This scene right here. Killed me. The only reason I'm standing here alive is because my true quirk was awakened with my death. I'm no longer human. I survive on blood, I'm a vampire. But that still doesn't answer your question, why I'm doing this. Well you see Japan. Not only did he put me through torture. All of Yue did. Just because I was quirkless. Every day, every single day. I would get beaten up, bruised, broken, and hurt by everyone in UA. Everyone. Not a single person actually helped. And the teachers. They did nothing. They watched me suffer. They watched as I slowly lost my sanity. Yet I still stayed hopeful, but for what? I looked up to All Might yet he hated me because I was corkless. Things weren't better at home either. Dragon and Magento are both pro heroes. Both of my parents as well. Yet, despite them being my parents, despite me being their son. They abused me, tortured me, every single day. Because I was corkless. There was no one there for me. Everyone hated me. Everyone still hates me. The League is the only place I've ever felt welcomed. And today. You're all here to witness my revenge, Midoriya said as he twirled the knife in his hand and stabbed Bakugo a couple times. Bakugo screamed in pain, everyone winced as they saw Midoriya stab his legs, as they watched Bakugo jump up and down in his seat, rattling the chains as he tried to break free. The torture went on for 10 minutes total, people throwing up, looking away, grimacing in pain for the blonde teen. 
only hearing his blood-curdling screams followed with sadistical laughter from the psycho teen. And for my final pure revenge, you're all going to witness the death of Katsuki Bakugo Midoriya laughed. The class gasped as they all almost jumped out of their seats. Azawa was trying to figure out where they were, the heroes were trying to figure out where they were. But it was no use. Midoriya brought the knife to Bakugo's neck as tears dripped down from the bloody teen. Smile cacking. After all, you're dying in the hands of the quirkless reject. This concludes this what if series. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe with post notifications. So you'd be notified when the next what if release. Until next time.